One, two, what is this? The JBP boys back to business. Episode what? Welcome to episode 404 of the Joe Budden Podcast. Brought to you by, powered by, sponsored by, empowered by, enabled by, and tolerated by Cash App, the greatest app in the world. You already know the vibes. You already know where we stand. Now, with that said, I'm your humble, gracious, grateful, and highly favored host, Joe Budden, here with a few of my nearest and dearest Brother Maul is here. Hey, Happy how you New doing, year, man? How's everything? How you feeling? I'm man? groovy. Good? I'm groovy, man. That's what's up, man. Good that's, to see that's you. That's kind of the swag you got on a day. Like yeah. I should tell you, it's groovy. Groovy? <laughs> I look groovy. Why you got your Uncle Joe swag on? Is it? <laughs> Maul been trying uh, to get these ain't his... Balenciagas. You know, you gotta wear Balenciagas no. to Tom Ford. If no, you de- de- you're definitely you in your Uncle Joe bag. Nah, man, this is you know a little stylish. Scully, Scully is a little more stylish than mine would be. Uh, I mean, you know, I try to do a little, a little something. What'd you do for New Year's? Huh? You shook quiet. some Bronx ass. <laughs> nah, I was quiet, man. I was I was in the house before ten o'clock. Quiet. Grab some food, order some bottles of wine, and that was it. That was it. Quiet. That's, that's what you got for me in 2021? Yeah. That was it, bro. I ain't do shit. Yo, you niggas gonna stop being losers this year? No. Yeah, for sure. That's some real loser shit, man. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's fine. I mean, everything was When kinda... you gonna let the streets feel you again? Like when oh, you I've go, been out of the when streets, you, really, you know that. I, I haven't know, hung out in years, man. Yeah, but when they gonna Mall, just... Mall wears condoms. Nobody yeah. I haven't hung out in years. But when you gonna let the people just, like, feel your impact again? <laughs> First of all, <laughs> Honestly, my impact. I'm asking you. Um, I don't know. I, I want to start traveling more though. I'm, I'm kind of over this whole sitting still shit. Like, listen, that's over with. I, I sat down for a year. I, 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 I paid my due diligence. Like now, it's like, all right, where we at this month? Every month, I'm traveling. I wouldn't give a fuck where it's at. I'm just going. Oh, well, welcome. Yeah, I know. I know <laughs> exactly. See, yeah, like that's what I, that's what I'm on. So for New Year's, I say, you know what? I'm keep it quiet. You know, just sit down, chill in the crib. But uh, who'd yeah. you bring, who'd you, who did you uh, bring the New Year in with? Did you have uh, company, family? Uh, well, my family, you know, my mom and everybody's in the Anybody south down was... south now. So I, I wasn't oh, going so down, but I spent Christmas uh, with them. Had the crib to yourself. First of all, I live alone. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's no, that's number one. Uh, <laughs> I live alone. Big night. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I live alone. Mom, off the living room. Mom, I'm always alone. How I'm long? Alone. How long y'all staying down there? <laughs> Talk to nigga. These I live alone, so okay. I'm always alone. But no, nah, it was it was it was quiet though. Just me. A couple of the homies came through after midnight. We was chilling, talking shit, drinking. Dude smoking. homies? Or yeah, like yeah, yeah. Homies you be fucking. Nah, nah. No, no women. No women around. Damn it. Yeah, nah. Parks, what's up, man? Chilling, man. Feeling good. What what'd you do? How'd you bring it in? Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. Uh we chill. Uh it was me, Rem, Prem, and Ian and Julia. And we uh chilled out. Drank some champagne, listened Quiet. to some music, mm-hmm. ate a bunch of food. There you go. Something light. There you go, see? Quiet shit. Something light. What ha- what have you? Yeah, what kind of th- th- activities were you into? I left New York. Mm-hmm. I left New York to get away for a little bit, just get some different air, some different energy. No, you need a different air. Humidity different, is, is a little uh-huh. different vibe, a different scene. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was I was out of here bright and early, uh, whatever morning that was. Where was it? You <laughs> don't so, even know the days yeah, anymore. Atlanta. Who's counting? <laughs> oh, yeah, Thursday morning, New Year's Eve, oh. bright, bright and early. Yeah, that day. Went down there, hung out, had a blast. Mm. Um, which, which streets got you? Was it Atlanta? Was it Miami? Was it Houston? Was it Vegas? What you mean? Where'd you go? I went to Miami. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I went to Miami. I spent New Year's Eve at uh, the Puffsters. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, wasn't a big party. Wasn't a big shindig. Mm-hmm. Wasn't some, a, some quiet. It wasn't a DJ. It was just, it was, it was quiet for him. Yeah. Mm. It was quiet for him. Just strictly like family and just close, 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 close friends, I mm. would say. So that was, that was cool. See, because 10% of Puff is cool with me, pause. Mm. Like I'm, I don't have the energy to do that. Oh, mm. like, it's a big party. It's an all day party. Uh, no, the par- life is the party. Mm. Got it. Like I may be left at three a.m. Tired. It's time to go to bed. Mm. Uh-huh. In the morning at nine, they still going. <laughs> then if you check Puff's Instagram that night, they still going. Oh, Chris Brown is there. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the David did. This nigga ain't slept. Yeah. No, <laughs> this nigga has not slept. No, he don't sleep. So it was ten percent a party at at Puff's. Real good time. No, he was there. Really, really, really good. Quiet, intimate time. And the rest of my time, in Miami, I was in the room. Mm. I didn't budge because okay. Miami had the Miami had the spring break energy mm. going. Sure. 
No, I, I, I had no idea. Like, I knew people's outside. We see the pictures of Atlanta. We see pictures of what's going on in Houston. I've seen you in Miami. Well, yeah, I but I have, I have frequented Miami through the year. Y'all know that. Yeah. When, when shit started getting funny and my normal Turks getaway was deaded, Miami became my getaway, right? So I've seen it super quiet, super mm-hmm. dead, closed, open. I've seen it with a little bit of people. This was spring break is back is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Well, like I was yeah. just out there three weeks ago. It wasn't this. Well, it was New Year's. So uh, it, uh, the energy would be different this time around. Every, yeah, everything's well, open. Well, once I got a little dose of that, I, I kept my ass, yeah. kept my ass in the room. Energy's Smart. different. Yeah, Florida, is, Florida is, is up and running. There are people at the Miami Heat game. Yeah, but listen, I'm anytime. All I ever need when I go out there is one good night. Give me my my gyro, my gyro from from my spot, and give me just some R and R, and I'm cool. Mm-hmm. So I came back feeling really refreshed, really rejuvenated. Mm-hmm. That's uh, good. Man. Just ready. Good. Just, just, just ready for 2021. I plan on taking. I plan on not playing with 2021 the way that 2020, uh, the way that 2020 didn't play with me. Mm. Like 2020 didn't play with Nick. This is the get back. I, yeah, yeah I, I got, I got to take it out yeah, on 2021. I think, I think 2021 is going to be the deluxe version, not for nothing. Good. We're getting some bonus tracks. Good, but I had a year of practice. Mm. Yeah. True. Either I'm way, wrong, either you know, way, so. this year is this year is going to feel me. Last year I was low. Mm-hmm. This year is going to feel me. No, I'm with you on that. I, I said that. I, you know, I, I, I stayed low. I'm I didn't done. go I'm done anywhere low. until October. I was literally in the house from December. I think we went, we went, we had a show in December somewhere. Yeah. And I, maybe? Yeah, yeah, that was the, I hadn't gone anywhere after that until October. So I, I'm like, okay, I'm cool. Like now, I'm out of here. But even in Miami, right? Like, I'm saying it was spring break, spring break ish. And I'm, I'm saying I didn't leave my room. So you can hear the partying and the, see the traffic and the music from various places going crazy, maybe all up until about midnight, 1230. Mm-hmm. Then you can hear a pin drop mm. yeah, in the streets. So it's, it's interesting. But I had a real good time just staring at the beach, staring at the water, staring at just staring at the elements. I'm the Virgo. Just give me some elements and I'm good. Smell yeah, I had a good time just being in the crib smoking, and sipping some wine and yeah. listening to music. And no matter where I'm at, I'm bringing the new year in, uh, prank, just talking to high power, thanking yeah, him. Yeah, Absolutely. Rory, what's going on, man? What's up? Yeah, didn't, it was uh was didn't mean to, didn't to mean to isolate in, uh, you. Yeah. I was supposed to be down in Fort Lauderdale uh celebrating with my pops, but obviously had to cancel because of uh the COVID shit. But honestly, I, as upset as I was, it wasn't nice to take in New Year's Eve super quiet. I didn't even turn on the TV for the ball drop shit. Like I did it in a real quiet, reflective, grateful gratitude, all those cool buzzwords type of way. Mm-hmm. Real quiet, didn't do the countdown, just kind of sat there and reflected and, you know, it, it, it was nice. Did you get drunk at least? I did, which I was told is not helpful for COVID, but, you know, it was New Year's Eve. Did anybody bother with a, a resolution or attempting to change something or going into the new year with a corny cliche, oh, focusing on me? No, it's no. kind of hard. It's yeah. kind of hard to do that. Uh, my, my thing was just being, again, we talked about being more present. That was it. More present, more more appreciating right now, more. For me, was getting to it in the 2021. Like, that's why I'm on this. Oh, I'm not playing with the year type shit. Oh, and for me, it was, yeah, think what you want. That's back. That, that's back. I hear, I hear, the listen, I listen back to our podcast, and I cringe when I hear me in particular, not really y'all, but me qualify something before I say it or mm. preface something before I say it or apologize to the offended party before I even said some shit. Man, suck my dick. I am finished with that this year. Think what you want. Let's go. You know, I'm I'm dead ass. I'm dead. I can't do that no more. I can't. It's like nails on a chalkboard when I hear it listening back. So I totally understand fans that have a problem with that. I hate it. Yeah, but that that we spoke about that. Suck my dick. I don't want to. I have to apologize for people just being overly sensitive, and I'm not doing that. Yeah, no, we're not on that. We're not on that. But uh, okay, so are you offended today? The culture. Uh, where 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 would you gentlemen like to begin with cultural critiques? Uh, it's a new year. Do y'all want to start with the wrap up? We could the wrap up stuff. We could. We got a little Uncle Murder, a little skills skills. Uh, I didn't hear up. skills. Which which one do you want to start with? Let's start with uh, who owns the wrap up now. Uncle let me let me, Uncle let, me let me get right to it out, out the gate for twenty twenty one. Yeah, Uncle Murder definitely. I didn't see too many people waiting for skills. They was everybody was like, Yo, where's Uncle Murder at? Yeah. So I think it's his now. Yeah, he snatched it from him. Yeah. Yeah. I think he did. You want, you want a little taste? Let's give him a little taste of what that Uncle Murder sound like. 
He's starting right. Classic All right, took a, took a classic. Start right. YouTube, this is Uncle Murder's uh, year end wrap up over a classic beat. He did right. Yeah. Because you'll definitely play this at a New Year's party. For sure. Yeah. yeah. It's a work. Wait a minute. Okay. Turn that down some. Oh, you oh yeah, you know, you can turn it off. That's fine. <laughs> he he caught a little pocket, huh? Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. was in his little groove. He was in his little groove right he, there. He owns that. That That's continues it. for 14 more minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so we that. have 14 minutes or is it? It was 13, 50. 14 minutes. All right, so we got 14 minutes of year end wrap up from Uncle Murray. That sounded good. He did a good yeah. job. Yeah. He did a good, it was some, it was some jokes in there, laughs. Some serious parts. He it was what the year basically was about. I appreciate the dudes that's even going to take the time to wrap up the year in a verse. Yeah, because like, this year wasn't easy. Last yeah. year was not an easy wrap up. Yeah. There was a lot to wrap. I think that was his longest one, Pause, if applicable. Uh, it was I, I, I could see it was that. Long last year. Too. It, was a, it was a long year. Yeah, it was a long year. Thir- Fourteen minutes is a long song. Mm-hmm. So are they both just going to continue to put out? Their own wrap ups. I'm assuming so. And I wanted to ask y'all if there was a life expectancy on <laughs> these wrap ups. Oh yeah, it's not. That's a two week, like, two week run. No, but say. no, I'm saying like, in uh, how long can Uncle Murder do this? Every oh, year, every year, I think well, forever. He's been doing and, it since yeah. three. I want to say. Yeah, I, I know. And someone took his from him. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> well, someone may take the baton at some yeah, point. Somebody might yeah. take it from Uncle Murder, but right now he has it for sure. So in he said he's done. So. He said, this, that? This Murder said one? he's finished after this one. See, all right, that's what I'm asking. Okay, but Skills I, has been saying he's been done with it since 05. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, it it's 2021. I think, I think the people kind of retired, Skills is. But let's hear, let's hear from Skills. You want to hear uh, Skills? VA's finest, 100%. Pause this. Pause this. Oh, yeah. Pause that. Probably didn't hear me. <laughs> I, said, I said put on skill shit. Oh, you want to hear skill shit? My bad. All right, hold up. Uh, yeah. No, that's when you do the high one. Uh, pause this. Uh, yeah. Pause this. So already we could kind of see how this occurred, right? <laughs> we we could kind of see what how. What sample is that? We could kind of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A nigga, Someone moaning 2020. A, that's a nigga throwing up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> nigga put some reverb on the throw up. <laughs> that's reverb, uh, reverb in the throw up. <laughs> that was definitely me after all the edibles and, and, and champagne on New Year's Eve. <laughs> oh, yo, shit. remember you earled that one time? Do it again in the mic. <laughs> yo, earl in the mic now, please. Metaphor for 2020. Yeah, I don't know where you got that sample from, but god damn it, hey. Wait, oh stop, 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 stop. See, see, that's wrong, too, when you start the year and wrap up with self-promotion. Because <laughs> we don't care who you are, necessarily. And let me say, I love skills. Yeah, for I sure. love skills. Yeah. But you can't... I'm trying to see if there was a point where he maybe just lost how the wrap-up should go. Because what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, I don't, that sample, yeah, I, don't, I can't listen to that sample. No. Skills gonna do Imagine being an engineer for that session. No. Parks was. No. Oh, yeah, that was you? You did uh, engineer okay. this. No, I'd have put some that was your tune finger on that print. Jesus. Your fingerprints was all over that one. <laughs> <laughs> I got to start telling dudes where their fingerprints was at. All right, so play he, this. He, he's, you want me to get right to the, to the... I want you to just play this so I can... Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't heard it. Let me see if the air horn will help. No, I don't think it needs the air horn. It's already not. Playing. YouTube, it's we're playing skills is that was it something? No, it's eight minutes. I was gonna get right. There's a, he threw Joe a little spice, man. I wanted to see see how Joe felt about over this. that beat. Yeah. Yeah. 
You are a whole ass weirdo. Why is Mad Skills calling Joe Budden a whole ass weirdo? <laughs> because it's a, mean, being alleged that you jerked off to your dogs. That's weird shit. No? And you are weird. Skills knows me in real life. He could call me if this is a point of contention for him. <laughs> but, but, but I'm just saying, you know, in the year, you I'm not, were accused of jerking not, off a but dog. But I'm not mad at the bar. I'm mad at that. It's always the ad lib. I keep telling y'all that. Are you a whole <laughs> ass weirdo? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, what yeah, you yeah. did? Because you had to tell your engineer, all right, give me another track. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go back in on yeah, that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think something is missing from yeah, this. Yeah, Come yeah, on, man. Yeah, nah, I feel no, you. I'm more mad at when he got the engineer to give him another stack for the stacking the... No, no, I need to harmonize that. I need to know what that is. So skills, yeah. so skills did the Jada kiss and attempted to do the wrap up over a disco beat. That's I don't even know disco. if that's a disco beat. I don't that's know what that beat? is. No, that's not even that ain't that ain't the BPMs is not even a nah. disco. Listen, me and Nas can't call anyone's beats trash. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Yeah. I understand my place in the culture, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, which is important. But that that's a bad beat. Yeah, I don't. That beat was kind of uh, not no. to wrap up the year. Nah. Or start the new year. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> I don't like, wanna, you don't want that going into I, leaving or going into he, the next he year. You could have left that right in, in the session. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that was a bad beat. Rory, what say you? Uh, I think outside of Murder. Oh, just he's such a, I, want, I wish he was closer. Period. I want to hug this nigga, man. You can't. Oh. He's just, well, he he comes in like a distant voice, like. He is a distant voice, Joe. I just think that Uncle Murder. Man, come <laughs> sit with us. Come <laughs> sit with us, man. <laughs> Go ahead. What you saying? No, nah, um, I think outside of murders just being better, outside of skills beat being super trash and the pocket he picked. I think why murders taken over the wrap up shit the past few years is because he adapted to the times of people liking salacious shit, funny shit, headliney shit said in a certain way. Like people live in the shade room comments all day. And murder, I think, says shit that applies to what the IG world is doing right now. Wait, the shade room Skip. didn't pick up Joe Bunn's a whole ass weirdo? Oh, I'm sure they did. I think they actually went a little further. But no, murder does the They didn't. They got they the kind of been leaving me alone, I want to say. put his own opinion into shit. Like, he just does the wrap-up that fits now. Like, Skills just wraps it up really well because he's a really good rapper, and that's it. And that's not the times we're in anymore. That worked five years ago, six years ago. It just Skills, don't. you are the man, but that was trash. Yeah, I got to... Does pick- it get better? Huh? Does it get any better than that? Same of course it does. You cut months. it off. Oh, yeah. Okay. Eight, well, eight. <laughs> Don't it sounds much better in here. <laughs> Coming through the speakers. <laughs> Who fixed the acoustics? <laughs> All right. I mean, I'm here this year, I man. It. I it. I'm here I this it, year, man. No, I like it. These niggas are not like scaring it. me off my takes no more. I like it. Yeah, I like fuck it. that. I like it. What else is trash? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Skills, you got to get a better beat next year, bro. Yeah, yeah, that beat. That was bad. I knew something was off when it was only two dudes that hit me and said, yo, man, I think Skill said something about you. I was like, that, man, does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> Who were the dudes that like hit they, you? I they were yeah, waiting for <laughs> each other to drop because they dropped, I think, on New Year's Day. They always drop it in December. Well, listen, I'm, I'm glad they both had a blast. Uh, the Uncle Murder shit did sound good, though. Murder yeah. shit is nice. I feel like Skills is dissing me because I like Uncle Murder shit. Like, why am I getting dissed? <laughs> everybody likes Uncle Murder shit. I think that you may have and, had every, a similar and everybody this likes year. and everybody likes dissing Joe. Yeah, that that too. I think you may have said something similar to "It's over for Skills" as wrap so up too. last year. So maybe this was just yeah, to but get back. Nah, you 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 dudes will not continue to banish Joe for telling the truth. <laughs> I understand. Who's doing such a thing? I though? understand skills. that as an artist, as a creative, sometimes we're the last to know. Actually, most times we're the last to know. So if I'm coming to tell the people, uh, I guess I understand. I'd be mad too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a whole ass yeah. back on it. Wait, yeah. no, I get it. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally get it. Listen, all right. Well, I want to come right in with questions, not predictions, but questions that you have for 2021 as it relates to music. Mm. Can I leave the house? Well, the I meant as it related to like artists. Can I leave the house? <laughs> will, will, artists be able leave to, the house? will artists be able to tour? Perform live? I meant like artists specifically that you maybe had some questions for. Like for me, I feel like I'll, 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 lead, I'll lead by ahead. example. For me, uh, damn, I feel like I'm always targeting this gentleman. But Party Next Door is right back on the clock for me in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> he just dropped like But I think he should be. Okay. I think he just dropped, and I don't think that he can afford the long hiatus because we just had a long hiatus. So I would like him to drop again soon. I think that would behoove him. 
Mm. That's my opinion. But we spoke about this, and we I feel like the bigger acts are shying away from it because they can't tour. We, we get it, so I don't even want to stay there. I'm just throwing some shit out. If it sticks, it sticks. If it don't, but it we don't. definitely a party album. Yes. Where the fuck is the internet? That's oh. ju- that's a Joe take. Okay. okay. En- enough of the hiatus. Mm. Like you have fans, Frank. I'm a fan. Where's Frank? Yeah, but Frank yeah. Ain't, Frank ain't popping out no time soon because that's Frank. Cold Cold and dropped. And Frank year, could right? be Frank. The internet has to the internet. But Frank <laughs> isn't necessarily. I mean, they rely he on tours. Tour a lot, Joe. I I, well, why. clearly, clearly. But I'm just saying, in 2021, these are people I would like to see some music from outside of the blockbuster releases. Uh, on a well, A list is actually more what I'm thinking. Not even artists. A list is coming though. Acts if they because we they didn't get that. But are they? Out. That's the question. No, nah, they're coming. I know, but when? Are they going to wait till shit opens up? Because then we might not see any A-list till summertime. Yeah, and outside of Drake, I can see a lot of A-list acts still waiting for more information on where the world is going to be. Not me. They're coming. You think I said fuck it? Yeah, no, I think they're coming. I think they planned on the, coming. The older ones. Maybe, I don't want to repeat shit ones. I've said here before. It's a new year with new energy. I felt like a lot of them were prepared to come last year and push yeah. their shit back. I, I don't think they're about to push it back another year. I think niggas will get back into their creation bag if it comes to that, and you'll just get a new project. Yeah. Uh, on a much smaller scale, I'm looking to see what Kyle Dion does in 2021. Okay, I am. Shout out to Kyle. That's my, yeah, but nah, fuck that. Put something out. Uh, on my old nigga shit, Tank. I'm looking for Tank. Like, it's just people that I'm looking for outside of the blockbuster releases. Speaking of blockbuster, I also saw that uh, doc that you told me to look at, uh, the last blockbuster. Boy, was it great. I didn't watch that. I didn't, I didn't see that one. I think someone I else thought you were the one to tell me that. No. No, it was not. Oh, you should I told watch you that. Reagan. That's no, I know Reagan, I but a, a, while, a while ago, I thought you mentioned to me that there was a doc about the last blockbuster. Someone else is bigging that up. I it was really good, though. Was it? It was great. You saw it? No. I didn't see it. I never even heard of it. Yeah, no, it's fine. Actually, no, we spoke about it here. I, I do remember. remember. I know. Yeah, yeah, that's we what We spoke I'm saying. about this here, and we were talking about uh, how that was a thing. Blockbuster video. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see this though. It was good. Uh, it was. It was. It was good. Um, but there no more that, left, right? I, I know y'all said it was one left. I think. I think maybe? Alaska, this is about. Alaska? This was about the very last. last one. Okay. The yeah, very yeah, last country. one. No, not in Alaska. This was in Portland. Okay. I want to say the last blockbuster would be in Portland. <laughs> Yeah, I want to say it was Portland, but it was real good. Uh, back to music. So that's what I mean about just predictions for the year, just shit that you, questions you would like to see answered for the year. I think that's a good way to set the tone for 2021 mm-hmm. in terms of music. Yeah. Last year, you know what? Last year, I, you know, I shouted out the podcasters for the amazing job y'all did in just covering culture, covering uh, hip hop, because last year that was tough to do. And unless you're doing it, you probably don't know how tough it was to do right. with the lack of releasing music. With all the morbid stories, just and the lack of motivation, it was hard. Just it, it was coming t- in to record, yeah, it leaving the house, like yeah. it was. It was just hard to do that. So just doing that was an accomplishment. And so this, this year, though, uh, in terms of changes that I personally would like to make for twenty twenty one, I want to be ahead of that. Like I don't, I don't want to be the guy that that is limited, limited in what he can, what he can, and what he has to say. Because hip hop is limited right now. Does that make sense? Sure. Absolutely. I get it. Yeah. Like, but- I don't want to be restricted in that way or just like kept in bounds that way because other creatives are feeling restricted in their abilities. I don't mm-hmm. want to do that. Yeah. And no. I felt like that for maybe half of last year. I did. Well, hip hop is very hypocritical. The hip hop culture is a very hypocritical culture. To what degree? And. To a lot of degrees. Well, I, mean, uh, I guess in what way? Um, just in a lot of the things that we uh we make cool. Sure. You know what I mean? Through yeah. music, we make a lot of shit cool through music and through the culture of hip hop. That when you really look at it, you like there's nothing cool about that. Right. There's a lot of shit that we don't accept from outside of the culture that we accept in within the culture. Mm. And it's just like like it's not it's just right and wrong. That's just how I I'm, I'm designed. It is a right and a wrong. And in hip hop, we make a lot of the wrong things seem like they're right. Right. And it's not. That's yeah, but it comes to a time where you all grow some of that shit. Yes. Yeah, you do. But it's. I it's feel still, like I've out. I feel like I've outgrown a lot of that. Oh, absolutely. But I'm just saying the culture. Period. Though, is very hypocritical. Like, and we'll get into it as we go. Yeah, but culture's in us. We're not in it. Yeah, but so are we hypocritical then? Is that what you want me to say that? I've been. 
Okay. Yeah. I think everyone in the world is a hypocrite. I've been Some hypocritical. Yeah. I've been a walking contradiction. Well, I speak more to our but culture. But I think that's the beauty of life. Not to step on your point because I, I agree it. with everything you're saying. Mm-hmm. But I do believe that for me, the beauty of life is to be able to feel one way when I'm when I'm 21 and feel a whole different way when I'm 25. Oh no, that's that's in life. Yeah, like grow, you learn. I felt in October. So. Yeah, yeah. So I, <laughs> like, get I like part. the ability to be able to look back and even laugh at. But somebody is dying every time we do a pod. It's New York. That's the fire, man. That's true too. Like I, li- I also like the ability to look back and laugh at some stupid shit that I thought at one point. Like, yeah. damn, what an idiot. Yeah. So like, I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, I want to allow for that. Is what I'm saying. But I still agree with what Maul saying. Yeah, yeah, it's just very hypocritical. A lot of things that we uh, we say are not cool, but then we turn around right now, culture, and make it cool. So that's all. But we'll talk about it more as we go on into the show. So I'm the only one that's going to say what they look forward to or their questions or their predictions or anything like that for 2020. That's fine. Don't worry about it. No, 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 no. no. (laughs) My question is still, when are we getting shit from the A-listers? Because I feel like we got a lot of uh, underground and B-list music, quote-unquote B-list. I don't want to disrespect nobody, you know, not Mm talent-wise, but Mm -hmm. but Mm marquee-wise. So the question is, do we get big releases or not? I I, I definitely thought, for for whatever weird reason, I did think that Drake was going to drop on New Year's Day. Hmm. I did. But well, didn't he announce this. a January? Well, he, he announced it and then backtracked when he said he wasn't ready. Uh, yeah, but I just I just felt like I'm like if there's any way that he would bring in a no, new year no, would no, be no, at no, the top of the year. Like no, I'm true. dropping. No, no, my bitch is not up yet. <laughs> no, my bitch. But maybe is, it'll help. My bitch is not up yet. Maybe it'll help. No, um, I know I make it look. Announced that it I know was. I make it look like my bitches is up. Mm-hmm. I know I make it look like seamless, but mm-hmm. they, they down a little it's bit. Down. It's down. <laughs> yeah, it's down, man. It's okay. Yeah, I wasn't ready for that on New Year's. You wasn't ready for it? On New Year's? Yeah, I was nah, ready for new music. I'm always ready nah, for new music. Nah, nah. From the from the guys that deliver great music. Yeah, I feel like Drake will help you bring you closer to the women friend. Because you guys can like hang out and listen to I don't think that. Certified we don't, we don't need to stay. Oh, just go, hang out, just go hang out with Drake. Certified yeah, there. lover boy. And then you can boy. show them that you are also a certified lover boy. The day that that drops is not for me to stand firm in my introvert bag alone, isolated in my room, looking at my fucking fancy LED lights alone. Well, no, but no. maybe you could be like, Sorry. hey, hey, you want to come over and listen to the new Drake album with me? Want to come over and suck some dick while the new Drake plays in the background? <laughs> oh, that's a vibe. Oh, tell oh, me man. about it. Come on, Roy. Oh, what, great. What do you think of that one? <laughs> listen to 40. <laughs> I'm gonna come through and suck some toxic dick to the beautiful sounds of 40. <laughs> Boy, yeah, that's a great fucking night. <laughs> Think what you want. I'm not editing. I'm not editing it out. No, that's great. That's great. That's a real, I want to say that sometimes. Those are real, emotions. Those are real, real feelings. No, no think what you want. Think what you want. I don't care. Uh, what other good shit is coming up? Oh, Smurda, Bobby Smurda, Bobby yes. Smurda, set to uh, February, said to be released February. I feel like they said. I know this we've done with this. Months. We've dealt with this seventy five times already. I know. Yeah. Hopefully, this time it is accurate and he is home in February. This time, I felt felt like it was it was closer to being accurate because I feel like the white people always want to let your man out and watch him see how he behaves for a little bit and say, "All right, mm-hmm. you can come out and join your man." Yeah. That's how I just pictured it in my head. <laughs> yeah, but hopefully this is this is true and this holds true, and he will but, be home in February. But this is if he's eligible for that good behavior thingamajiggy mm-hmm. time off because mm-hmm. his set date was December, but now it's supposed to be February. Yeah, it's February twenty third. December that passed, or yeah, okay, the new one. Got it. Yeah. Well, I hope so. I really hope that he comes home just because I'm having a blast watching uh watching uh rowdy rowdy uh. I just love when niggas come home and get right to it. I know I said that before, but mm-hmm. like I keep seeing pictures of him getting right to it. Even if he's just standing on top of a car with people filming him. That's <laughs> even that to me is him getting right to it. So I like to see that and I'd like to see him do that with his man. So congratulations, shout out to Bobby Schmurter. Hopefully he he does come home in February. Yes. Um what else is on the music front? 36 minutes is good enough well, to Cole, get Well, Cole Cole dropped uh he posted this picture of a oh, book yeah. with J. Cole posted the fall off features. So this is this is his it looks like it's his time. Return he did all features, the features, Return of Dreamers dropped. three. Correct. The off season. It's, it's a boy. Something that's coming next. The and fall then, off. Yes. That appears to be his timeline. Mm-hmm. Although I don't know if that's his timeline or like the label's timeline, because the it's Return of the Dreamers is on there, so Yeah, these but that's other... he doesn't the label doesn't have a timeline for him. Cole does what he wants. He, well, dro- no, no, he, he saying, dropped this when? This was right, right around sometime last week. Um, 
I'm saying that I don't know if this is the entire label's timeline or if this is his personal timeline because Revenge of the Dreamers was not a Cole project. Mm-hmm. So do we know that the off season or it's a boy is a Cole project? We don't know that. That's all I'm saying. Uh, the fall off. The fall off is an album. Yeah, he's announced that one. about the title. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the two in between. The off season and it's a boy. Well, it's a boy sounds like him and his wife are expecting. That is true. I would think. I will not invest a, a one second of brain power <laughs> into trying to figure out what Cole is trying to tell me. I only do that for Beyonce. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not letting you niggas cryptic message me to death. Tell me what you want me to know, and then I'll know it. He told you it's a boy. <laughs> That's what he wants you to know. <laughs> yeah. It's the off season. It's the off I mean, season, it's and it's a boy. But it, what, what that does say is that J. Cole will be releasing music in 2021. For sure. Back to Parker's Absolutely. Because I do believe that. Yeah. And then J, uh, J.I.D.'s Yes Sir I see the off season being a, a mixtape. I could definitely see that. That makes sense. Because uh, that kind of plays with the sports lines that he used on his mixtape series mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see it. Do you guys think that people are going to let Daniel Caesar come back? Uh, well, they, they they like tried to cancel Daniel Caesar, right? A little something. He was on a cancel list last year. Yeah, I think Rory did that. No, Daniel Caesar and Rory pieced it up. <laughs> oh, okay. I think he pieced we it did. up with we me did. as Shout well. Out to Daniel, Daniel Caesar. Caesar's all right in my book. I'm just saying, great artist. People seem to have effectively canceled him. I'm saying, does that change or turn over any in in the new year? I'm all about what's happening this year. That's it. Um, I think anyone that drops fire is gonna be. Yeah, welcome he back. Dropped fire the last album and nobody gave a fuck. Well, I, you, that's what I was gonna say. The only way I was album was fire. actually sort of canceled was because that last album was really, really, really good. Mm. It just kind of went under the radar, and no one talked about it at all. I could see if it was trash and be like, "All right, this is just a music thing." The album was good. Well, he's so, a, he's he's one of those artists. That, like, I don't know if that does. That people really did not care because of of his comments and. Cancel culture and things of that nature. Did we ask Rory what he did for New Year's? Yeah, we did. Yeah. What did he do? He didn't watch TV and he got drunk. <laughs> oh, I don't care about that. All right, anyway. <laughs> I, uh, I added in self-reflection and gratitude. Yeah. You did a lot of yeah, you did, Rory. My bad. Sorry. Yeah, no, I still don't care. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I would welcome a Daniel Caesar album, though, in 2021. I like Daniel Caesar. He's a very talented kid. Yeah, I'm not. Well, thank you for piggybacking off of what I said. Instead no, I'm of coming saying, up with your own original I, thing that you like to expect this year. No, I'm just saying most because we artists, were talking about who was canceled. Most of the it's only are, him. <laughs> they tried to cancel Sabrina Chloe. I know, but it didn't really work. Well, she didn't put nothing out, so we don't know. And we canceled cancel culture. That's I true. think once they we realized did. that they wasn't was canceling say, where, shit, they chilled out. Where do y'all see cancel culture in 2021? I don't see it. It's over. Unless it's someone like a legitimate reason to cancel someone. And that's just called life at that point. The right. weekend it's called jail. Jail. Cancel culture has to do prison. With legitimately canceling people that should be canceled. The weekend reveals next album will be inspired by Black Lives Matter and coronavirus pandemic. Hmm, that's good. I want to. I want to make I'm that. I'm interested to hear a little. It's Cloud Chasey. Stop telling me about what the weekend announced. The weekend hardly talks. Well, that's true. It seems. Don't tell me about a fucking weekend announcement. It seems until the weekend is ready to announce something, and I'll know that that comes with some type of urgency. When uh, like it did when he was beefing with Usher. It was the only time I ever heard him just pop up and start talking about some shit. Uh, Shut up! Damn, I, I, I'm I really calling all this bullshit hear him out. Croon about vaccines and COVID at all? Well, I think he's, coke, well, he's going to do that because he's cool enough to do that. He'll do a coke drug flip with the virus and all types of shit. I, I love when he does that, but I don't want to hear about your announcement. I don't think the weekend is is. Well, this tells us the weekend is coming in 2021. Yeah, I would, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, well, until he's closer to coming, I don't want to hear the shit. <laughs> I do. I, I, I am tired. Of, I think he's pissed I, off. I, listen, we he's have definitely listen. Pissed time off. out. We have to gear up for this because first quarter it's announcement season. Yeah, yeah. I'm tired. That's of, what I'm telling you. I'm tired of the PR. This is that's, what the, I yeah, put you on thank that. hundred percent. It's not none against the weekend. None against anybody that's actually preparing to make announcements. I got some coming too, but I'm guarding up against these shits. Yeah, they're not gonna beat me down with what's coming. And not for nothing, I kind of like when, especially someone like the weekend who I. Holding a high artistic regard, I would like to kind of like figure out that the album is about yeah. coronavirus and Black Lives Matter, as opposed to being told and then going into it with a certain lyrical expectation or something. Like, let well, it be a little. Let, let us figure it out. Well, the weekend is he's upset. You know, that's the PR move. He's been he was snubbed last year. Um, sure. He spent his whole year in character. Yeah, 
Like you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, Sunshine and he wasn't even nominated. For eight months. Yeah, so it's like I at this point he's just like, all right, I'm not playing. Like this this year, I'm going to be in your face and in your ears every fucking month. And I think that's what he's setting up to do. I do. I think this. So, is, I think this is a personal year for him. It's it's also SZA time in 2021. She's two for two on yeah. releases. SZA, yeah. Two different two different type of moods. Both amazing. It's it's SZA time 2021. I can't wait for a SZA album. I can't lie. Don't say that to me again, Roy. It's SZA time. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want a SZA. <laughs> Not you trying to SZA. You don't, you don't worry about the SZA each other. <laughs> Not trying to SZA with me. <laughs> Yo, let's get some things straight for 2021. <laughs> I'm just saying. Let's get it together. It sounds like that's let's what y'all are doing. Let's all really get it together. Like that, so let's cool. all get it together this year. Mo, you're not taking Rory's place with these little funny jokes. No, y- y'all I had a moment. taking your place. Y'all had a, y'all it y'all had wasn't a moment. A moment. Y- you said scissor. Yo, you don't want to scissor. I'm not scissoring oh. with Rory. I'm not okay. scissoring with girls. That's all you had to say. <laughs> well, you got to scissor with the women sometimes. <laughs> Nigga, I don't scissor anymore. You got to try it. What's that? I lost that flexibility. That's this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Are y'all scissoring still? No. God, no. Tell me. Uh, see, still? You, you did it. Yeah, yeah, when I was nine to my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you Yo. talking about? Oh, no. See, that's what, that's, what, that's what the problem is. You got turned off from me. Nah, that's how you practice. No, you got to do it with the right women. <laughs> Get over here, Melissa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're sleeping in this bunk. <laughs> Yo, I don't ever want to hear a white it's joke. It's a joke. Hey, think what you no, want. No, we're not doing yet. Think, think what, what you want. Think what you, you want in 2021. Fuck nah, that. don't think that, though. <laughs> <laughs> don't think that. <laughs> that's a little flagrant. We're joking around. Ha, ta-da. Oh man. Uh anyway, well, come on, give me more music. More music. I'm riled up. 2021. Uh, High right. vibrations. Give me more music. I, I think Beyonce is. They're depending on us. I think uh, Beyonce. Wait, hold up. Hold up. Breaking news. Breaking news from the guy that clubbed with her before. No, no, no. <laughs> I, 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 I could see her dropping in 2021, though. I could see that. I could see he Beyonce. Did, he did club with Beyonce. I didn't club I with I was Beyonce. There. You was did hilarious. club with I Beyonce. I didn't club with Beyonce. <laughs> Yo, what? Mo, Beyonce do that was at the club. I didn't club Mo, no, with no, no. her. The, but please, this year. That's like, that's like when niggas be like, Yo, us. I was in a club with Joe. Yeah, you don't even know who that nigga is. But he just was, saw you in a club and was like, Yo, I was with Joe last night. Pictures, Mo, this, Mo, this picture Mo, I was there. You were sitting right next to her. We were invited because of you. <laughs> like, I didn't club. <laughs> I wasn't club. That's why with I slept in the car. Let them niggas know. I don't give a fuck about Maul. <laughs> <laughs> I purposely. Sometimes you gotta let niggas know. Look at the know. six shit. Look at your, how your brain operates. I'm gonna sit in the car so they know I don't fuck with Maul. I don't Maul. give two what? fucks about Maul. Y'all go party, nigga. Yeah, let's, I'm cut the title out. check. <laughs> I'm not partying. <laughs> All right, I'm getting jealous. I will be get paid for the walkthrough. Kidding, ho. I will be curious coming off the uh, weekend thing. Is are, are we going to get an entire year of music that is about the pandemic? I hope not. <laughs> oh my god! I hope not. <laughs> tell me what. How, how many? Tell uh, me what prominent artists can really. Bars do you think we'll tell me what prominent like, artists can really drive these bars home? I hope not. You gotta scrap it, guys. Let's leave twenty twenty and twenty twenty. Yeah. Like let's let's just leave that. Yeah. I don't ever want to hear about twenty twenty. Oh, Lupe is going to compare it to Kung Fu somehow. <laughs> and it's gonna and it's gonna be dope. Uh, I heard a uh, Pusha T and Mad Lib rumor for 2020. I album. think that one's been floating around for a while. I heard, um, uh, well, we can go into that conversation. No, so you can't say what you No, I can't say what I was, was going It's about uh, MF Doom, Mad Villainy 2. They've had recorded for a million mm-hmm. years. It was uh, uh, Peanut Butter Wolf was on one app, and he talked about that possibly coming out mm-hmm. sometime. You got it. Rest well, we are going to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll, get, we'll get to do it. Um, I, I did hear that 2021, they were going to try to put together a Nipsey album of, of all the music that he did record. We um, said that We said that last part, right? Yeah. Oh, I didn't listen to y'all. He didn't I listen to the episode. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we spoke about that last episode. Yo, close uh, laptop. <laughs> last episode. <laughs> Rory, like Rory you know, we could just close you. Yeah. <laughs> Slam you shut, buddy. We don't have to be exposed <laughs> to you. <laughs> the fuck is he talking about? But yeah, uh, Jay, it was, uh, Jay Stone was yeah, that? Jay yeah, Stone. Jay Stone had an announced that. That Nip had a lot of recorded music that they were gonna put out. Yeah. So yeah, I'm and looking forward to, to that. Shout out to Stone's album. Yeah, it's really good. In our absence, the M Snoop stuff has really heated up. Oh yes, I've been paying close attention to that one. <laughs> I have. I, I, I watched. Uh, Benzino was on a uh, Queens flip. Oh. Uh, with uh, with Flip and G Money. Okay. So I watched. So it, I watched. Yeah, I watched. I watched a lot of that. Listen, man, Benzino made a lot of valid points. 
He made a lot of that. And I know Benzino's not the guy that people in the culture rush well, to and listen you to. You can lose Royce's number. <laughs> no, I'm just saying he, he made a lot of he made a lot of valid points. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things. Such he was, as you can't come to the next well, slaughterhouse was, video. He, he was saying how Eminem was um hey, you can't either. But, <laughs> good right. point, good point, Roy. Thank he you. was saying how he he just noticed early that Eminem was somebody that they put into the culture to kind of do the same thing that Elvis did with rock and roll. And he that's, saw that. That's a similar stance oh that David Mays had on the that's Chitty excessive. Chatty House last night. That's with excessive. No, but he was saying he was saying because you know if it's just about lyrics and lyrical ability, then why isn't you know cannabis held at the same regard? He didn't make good music, fam. And his thing is Eminem really didn't good. make good Buck, music. Either. Bucking, didn't Buckingham Palace wasn't lose mentality. yourself. Yeah, but these are. That's, but that's why. Here, what Benzino was saying and, was, and, I'm not just going to put MVP shit on on people because they're white. And, and like, no, 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 no. That's that's not. It's not even about a, a, a white thing. He was more so saying the content isn't what people run to hear. Like you, you, we don't, we don't, we don't come from that. We don't understand that. We don't understand what it's like to want to kill your mom and kill your baby mother. And but that wasn't every song. No, it wasn't every song. But he was saying he and he said gave him props. He said, "Yo, he can rap. He can put words together really well." And he had certain songs that we like. Uh-huh. But you don't go back and play that shit. You don't listen to it. Eminem music. Doesn't play anywhere. That's Unless not true. It, where does it play? I've that's, been to, I've been true. to West Side Gun concert, uh shows and all of these. I don't want to say underground, but these underground type of artists. Yeah. Where in between sets. You would think that that type of hip hop would be playing. They don't play that there. You're day. not playing the Eminem. Eminem music plays. Where? It plays. Somewhere. <laughs> Y'all can't. No, no, no. We're not doing that in 2021. Clear, clearly where have does, you heard somebody playing Eminem music? music? Not where I frequent. Yeah, yes, Rory. Where? I know that we're kind of, it's hard to uh, pick you up all the time, Rory, but he sells platinum every single time he drops. It plays it somewhere. Plays. Where, Someone, where, some... where? And when? When are we? when's the cutoff? Because that uh, Rihanna... Record the up tempo and the frequency did. I heard every fucking store I went into for four years. I still that hear song. Shit. Y'all act like you never seen a white person before. Jaws all over the floor like a panther. Whatever Where? that one was, I say that when I'm when I used to be out. Yeah, like, go to the, in like the store. I'm talking about yeah. corporate shit. I'm not talking about in somebody's car or somebody's house, but. There are places where there's plays. When I when I spent time in Detroit, shit, our last show in, in Detroit, our podcast show, I heard a bunch of people playing Eminem. Like, there are people that play it. But I understand what you and some other people have said about, like... Yes, people play like, because I, I Eminem it. is a... He's it's a, big business. It's big business. I understand that. But to what Benzino was saying, it was valid. It was like, bro, we championed something, and it was like... But when you really look at it, there are a lot of artists from our culture that make the same type of rap... But we don't ever speak about like who. I mean, if cannabis is one, but no, he didn't make good music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, 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 and to you, you will not start to you, my I actually. Hey, we we will not you. start my twenty twenty one with so, a cannabis <laughs> argument. No, no, no. It's not so an argument. Y'all wrap this shit up. <laughs> it's not. A, it's not. A, no, 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 no. It's not an argument. It's not an argument. But there is there is validity to that. Though. I like some cannabis songs, but well, in general, he did not make as good a music as Eminem. I, I agree. Songwriting I wise. agree. But I think what Benzino was saying, where there are a lot of artists in our culture that are just as lyrical, that people don't pay any attention to. Mark, I ask you a question. Why is that? You and Benzino. Excuse me. Eminem made the song "White America." He's admitted this. He knows this. He knows that because he's white, he's become a fucking huge pop star. Mm-hmm. He's addressed it. Mm-hmm. He's aware of it. Mm-hmm. He came into the culture not to take it and say hey I'm the biggest I stole everyone's songs the way Elvis did mm-hmm. he came in with a, a genuine love for hip hop he just happened to be a blonde headed white kid that yeah, a bunch I don't... of blonde headed white kids could relate to so they loved him but to me but, that's and, but that's, fault. I just want to point out that I, I wanted to talk to you all about M and Snoop and somehow this has been a Benzino and Dave Mays talk no well, but this it all ties in points. yeah it all ties into the what because what Snoop said was he doesn't listen to that he was like, yo, I don't listen to it. That's not the type of shit I listen to, and he's not in my top ten. And so, I, I agree with that. I don't listen to Eminem I, on a particularly either. regular basis, but he does make quality music that it was popular, mm-hmm. and he rapped at a high level, and every song was not about killing his mom and his daughter. No, absolutely, no I'm not saying every song He had was. songs that were about real things. Absolutely. I, I love Eminem. Yeah. Let me just be, be clear on that. Yeah. But I do understand how people that are in the culture mm-hmm. can view him in that way. Well, well, let's love him enough to keep this topic concise. Back to Snoop yeah. and Eminem. Yeah. It's what? all the same. No, it's not. It is. 
Well, what transpired since our last conversation about Snoop? Well, nobody and gives a fuck if uh, there's a and, and Benzino beef. It's tomorrow. not. Been, it wasn't about beef. Or though. A, he was talking about his points. Yeah, he wasn't it wasn't about. about it wasn't take about the beef. names out of. Oh, it. that's what you're saying. Yeah, it oh, wasn't about, about a point. beef. Got it. Got it. Got it. He yeah. was just saying what he was saying back then is what everyone seems to be saying now. Well, all Snoop was saying was, "You're not in my top ten, and quite frankly, if you put me on, a, if I had to do without your music, I could." Mm-hmm. Now, what M stance is is, "Hey, last time I seen you, everything was all good. Like we was cool. Like same camp, same clique, same. Like why am I getting this type of energy?" Mm-hmm. I understand both sides. Yeah, yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, I, I mean, this is just that. the beef that I don't want to see progress. Yeah, mm-hmm. me, me either. This is the beef I don't want to hear music from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh. But I get it. Although I, Zeus was a dope record. I heard M's response. I didn't really like it. We could play it. Everything he said, by the way, was fine. Like, up to a point. You know, when he, like, like A, I've never said, like him saying that that he, I'm not in his top 10 because there's some rappers from the 90s that I can't fuck with. I, You know, A, a him saying Dre made the best version of me absolutely like uh, why would i have a problem with that no, like, if, would i be here without drake Fuck no, no. Joe Biden. the rappers you mentioned from the 90s krs1 bigetti kane g-rap like i've never said i could fuck with them i never said that you know what i'm saying so it's all like everything was good until like hit, you know it was more like i think it was more about the tone he was using that caught me off guard because i'm like yo Stop where this. is this coming this is bothersome to me listening to this clip um ironically because of tone <laughs> i don't like m's tone in expressing that he doesn't like the tone this, yeah you don't well, like his tone I, don't, I, tone. I didn't like his tone before he got to that part um just in you can hear it's not something that he really wanted to do um it's kind of the same way i felt when he was responding to me through them interviews and songs like it didn't feel like it didn't sound like there was something you wanted to do but just did it it's like as far as addressing it or yeah, like addressing an, it in an interview? P- addressing it, it it existing, having to address it. Oh, like okay. all of, The fact that all of this exists, it sounds like it's worrisome for him. That's how it sounds. And then he says it wasn't any of that, which means it was all of that. Mm. And he gets to, it was the tone. And that's where I had just have a huge issue in hip-hop and hip-hop critiquing and culture critiquing or whatever the fuck you want to call it now. Mm. Are we tone policing? I think you can because when, when exact, you're somebody you, because you that's know exactly a what that with. says. Oh, wait. I'm not mad at that existing. You good, Roy? Yeah, well, I was going to respond, but go ahead because I know it's tough. I'm not mad at what you saying. As humans, instinctually, we would feel something if our friend or someone we yeah. were closely affiliated mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. did that. Mm-hmm. Cool. When you say it publicly, mm-hmm. it sounds like bullshit. Like him saying, y'all don't have a problem with all the people you put ahead of me in your top 10 and you're not listening to my shit. Like, that was cool. No, it wasn't. Why, why do you say no, it wasn't? Because he had a problem with it. I, don't, th- I don't think he had no problem tone, with that. Tone matters with my friends. I think he did. No, but he I, said- I, heard, I heard the tone part. I, I, I think that's a lazy scapegoat. I think it's true, but I also think it's a lazy scapegoat. The, the reason why I believe what he's saying, because he, he did say, I never said I was better than any of those guys, mm-hmm. and which is true. He never said that. So that's why I believe the, that part of him saying, like, I don't have a problem with you having these guys ahead of me. I never said the I big, could fuck with the them. The big time niggas feel a way when anybody say something about them. Let me start there. That's my premise. I'm that's starting true. with that. It's just, it's just so weird. So it's added on when you know the person, when you got history with the person, and you in the same clique. But nothing is different here than when M felt a way about me. Like, I was saying, yo, this album, this rollout, I don't get it, the track list, I don't, I mean, I don't get it. And he had a huge issue with that. No, I you think said I, more than that, though. Your tone was definitely all over the place. Your nigga, energy was all nobody's over the place. policing my tone in well, 2021. Well, well, that was just Yo, if you niggas have a problem with my tone, I don't give a fuck. This was 2020. Y'all don't have to like nothing I said. I'm not talking about M. This was 2020. I know, I'm just talking about that. Yeah. But even then, like the tone police, I take a little issue with that, but I totally understand where Emma's coming from and why he felt the way. But I, I get Snoop too. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. from a selfish consumer standpoint, this ain't the beef none of us want to see. No, we don't. No, like y'all could talk this out. This beef. Now, I was in the chitty chatty house and there were rumblings of why this may be occurred. And I'll say it only because Daz Dillinger said it. Shout out to the OG. He was saying that... Uh, one of the lines, one of the one of the Snoop lines that M used in one of M's records, I don't remember what records they were, he had to clear, and Snoop cleared it. Y'all go ahead, it's home team. Y'all don't even worry about it. Y'all go ahead and use it. 
But then when it came time to return the favor and Snoop was looking for a verse from M, he had a hard time getting one. Uh, he was told no. Now, that's always tricky because you don't know if the request actually made it to the artist. Like, you don't know. You can't really prove if the artist is saying, no, I'm not rhyming with you. But I'm, if I'm Snoop, I don't give a fuck where it come from. I find it hard to believe that a Snoop request wouldn't make its way to M directly. Yeah, no matter what I'm you pretty find sure they have to direct If you're Paul Rosenberg you. That's and true. you are protecting Eminem and you don't want this to get to Eminem, it cannot get to Eminem, maybe. Yeah. There's a world where that exists. That's true. And if I'm Snoop, I don't care what happened there. All I know is I didn't get my inverse. Yeah. So I could see that if being. that stuff is true, that makes this story make a lot more sense than two niggas from the same camp that are just going through this. I don't see that making like sense. Like 50 though. can squash this, nah, Dre can squash sense. this, somebody can squash no, this. I don't think that Snoop's request never made it to him. Oh, no. No, I'll I don't say, believe that. I don't I thought believe you were that saying that uh, that wouldn't be a, a, good a cop, reason why this would happen. But don't say that. Don't, don't, don't just dismiss, be so dismissive of that. Good cop, bad cop is a thing in industry. Yeah, Absolutely, for but sure. I so just, then you can't. If that's the thing, you can't dismiss it. That could be be the plan. You good cop. I mean, uh, uh, you bad cop. I'm good cop. The verse never got to me. The request never got I think to me. That, Even I think if that, that you can't prove it. I think yeah. that holds true for most artists, but somebody directly associated that close to M Dre. That and it's whole, Snoop. Yeah, and it and it's Snoop. I don't see Which a request. Tells me that he probably didn't double text. True. It is Snoop. True. So I can mm -hmm. see him making a request however he made it. Mm -hmm. and then, it. It not being followed up on and it just falling by the wayside and Snoop never getting his verse. That does happen sometimes. It happens like, all the time. Yeah, like, I totally understand that. Yeah. But in that optic, this like, yo, story makes a hit, lot more sense. I shouldn't have sense. to hit you twice. I'm me. And I shouldn't have to. Fam, I'm Snoop. I'm asking for a verse. That should be the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Give me my verse. True. I don't care if that's through Paul, that's, that's through Tracy, whoever is over there, Shady. Yeah. I want my verse. Yeah. That's it. And that's a reasonable... I get it. I get it. Yeah, that's very reasonable. Still, it's still this is which, not the beef that I want to see in 2021. Why I get M's tone thing. It's the same way. It's family. You can speak about me in a better tone. Mm -hmm. So call, I, get, I totally understand... If you have a problem with my tone, tone, man, call my phone and tell me you have a problem with my tone. Doing an interview where you publicly say you have a problem with the tone, it just comes off away is all I'm saying. I'm not saying he can't well, have a problem with the tone, but in 2021, the fucking tone police is what we're doing. Yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm in no way ever been the person that's like, if you do something in public to me, make sure the apology is public. I've never lived that way, but I do understand people do live that way. So make sure the apology is as loud as the offense. Publicly, I get it. This get is it. the last beef that I want to see. Same. Or oh, no, here. I, never, I don't want to see the two of them. Hey, they, speaking, legends, speaking of beefs. From, again, the same camp. Like, I don't ever want to see M and, and Snoop beef. Speaking of beefs that I don't necessarily want to hear from, I'm hearing that there's supposedly something going on between uh, Freddie Gibbs and LL Cool J. Really? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's the most random shit ever. I did see uh, Freddie posting uh, Q-Tip and LL were in the studio. And it was an uh, alternative sounding beat. <laughs> which is which is normal in a Q-tip session, by yeah, the way. Yeah, and I saw Gibbs making, like, just laughing at it, crying emojis or some <laughs> shit like that. And LL is not, he's not really the most cool-tempered guy when it comes to someone sending a barb his way. No. Historically. This pod, we have done a thorough breakdown There's not on, no beef on between L Freddie Gibbs LL and LL beefing with Gibbs. Uh... We've done a thorough breakdown on Benzino's <laughs> diss attempts <laughs> and uh, Mad Skills' year in Rabbi. That's how we were starting the year. <laughs> I'm just pointing it out to you guys. It's a weird time. It's a weird time. Having beef with LL in 2021? Oh, yeah. Come on, man. I know that y'all think that's weird. I'm here to challenge y'all all year. I know it's weird. But who do you got? <laughs> uh, as far as, hey, as, far as what? Hey, uh, la, la, la. No! As far as fighting? No. As far as fighting? No, not this year. As far as fighting? As no, bars. bars. Not this year you oh, won't bars? do it to me. Oh, no. I, I'm as going Freddy. As far as what? I'm going Freddy. I'm going, I'm going Gibbs, man. Yeah. In 2021, I'm going Freddy, I'm man. I'm going L. I'm going L. I'm going L. Y'all going to take it?
like, yo, sorry. Battle, I was battle tested, and there's a million times in my career, in my, in my life, where I was like, there's no way LL is going to respond to this, and I it's going to sound it, cool. We talking about 2020. I know, me too. I said what, the same thing in what, 2001 what, or whatever. Oh, shit. Or 98 when he was people came. I was like, there's no way. LL makes love. No, but 98, 20 years ago. What Freddie Gibbs do when this come on? Hey. So you talking about record? I'm not talking about that. Nah, nigga, I'm talking about it's everything. It's not a versus. Yeah, this ain't it a is. versus. What are you talking it about? It is. It is a versus. This nigga's, nigga's crazy. What are you nigga trying right to make now? a Freddie Gibbs and I LL versus? It is a versus now. This ain't no fucking versus. Now, now, now it's a versus yeah, now. Nobody would hear that shit. Take that, Freddie Gibbs. Alchemist this one. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I don't want to hear nothing about Alfredo when this comes on, buddy. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> I feel yeah. you on that. Come on, laugh with me. Y'all think it's so no. pussy. <laughs> I'm done with y'all in 2021. Hey, you make every other sins LL was saying that to his lady. Mm -hmm. Dirty you Macker make you time. make Number me one. sick. Ladies love. <laughs> that would be actually a funny battle if it were to happen. Because <laughs> Gibbs is going to be jokes. Gibbs, Gibbs is going to have jokes. I hate to break it to y'all. <laughs> Freddie Gibbs is losing to LL Cool J if they are to make rap verses about each other back and forth. I think I agree. <laughs> I think I agree. Y'all fucking know, tripping, I, I know. I know. Yo, In 2021? How old is LL? It don't matter. I don't give a fuck no, how old it matters. Is. It matters. Oh, no, no, it matters. I don't care how It matters. Old it matters. It definitely matters. See, that's that. It, it reminds me of the KRS-1 versus... Uh, Come on, L will be 53 next week, man. Come on. Hey, so. with, with, a, with a dub. Come on, man. Cut it out. <laughs> with not, with a not, dub. We're not doing that. With not, a dub. No, no he's not doing it. I love L, but come on, don't do that. This is 6 3 at the sound of the beat, video, boy. Look, that's Freddy. a sick nigga. Look. You're not beating no nigga Wait, that still got the voicemail voice like that. <laughs> Any nigga that still got the voicemail oh, set up like that, you're not beating look, him. He's calling back now, scared to death. <laughs> scared Yo. to death of the L. Oh, hello? What's the word? Freddie Gibbs, this is Joe Budden from the Joe Budden Podcast. Happy New Year to you, sir. Man, Happy New Year, man. Shit, I heard man. I heard the strangest thing the other day. What's that? I heard that you and LL had a little back and forth brewing. Me and LL, like LL Cool J? Yeah. <laughs> no fucking way. That's what I heard. No way. Me and LL do not have beef, man. How can I have beef with LL Cool J, man? He's one of the greatest of all time, founders of hip hop. How can I have beef with LL Cool J? I'm just telling you what I heard in the streets. So you're telling uh, me that's not accurate. That's definitely not accurate. No, see, there you go. All right, so you pussy. There you go. <laughs> I saw some, I mean, you know, I said some funny stuff about LL online, you know. And now, funny, and, now but, uh, you, and now you're afraid. No, not at all. Never. Sounds never. like it. Sounds like, afraid sound, of what? Sound, <laughs> sound like the joke. Afraid I mean, of the, what, the bars? The yeah. LL bars? Yes, nigga. Man, if you don't get this DC <laughs> shit out of here, man, I ain't worried about no bars from LL Cool J, man. Freddie Gibbs, the whole the whole world is closed, and you found somewhere to cop, please. I love LL Cool J, man, but I'm definitely not worried about no bars from LL Cool. J. Well, well, hypothetically, Mister Freddie okay. Gibbs, if love there happened cool to be an exchange of bars between you, who do you think would get the better of the other? I say LL. Um, um no. I mean, you think wrong, Mr. Budden. I mean, you know, maybe if this was, you know, I don't know, 90-something or 80-something, you know, LL is, you know, that's that's Jack the Ripper. I respect LL. He's the best, one of the best at battle rappers. Me too. You know what I mean? I ain't never heard you battle. I ain't never heard you battle nobody, though, Mr. Gibbs. Because don't nobody, because you know why? Because don't nobody want it with me. That's why. Nah, nah. I see where he going. They know don't play like that. Hey, until you, quote, unquote, nice Nice rappers get involved in some beef. I can't just assume how y'all would perform perform in beef. LL has get done it here, too man. many times. He oh, did it to oh, cannabis. I mean, what do you think he's gonna do to you? Honestly, tell the truth. I'm not. I'm not worried about it, bro. I done brought bars to the rappers before. I'm not worried about it. I ain't worried about giving people a couple bars. That's easy. That's easy. Call me, man. I'll help you out. Slight worth out, Fred. I'll help you out, man. We we'll get we we'll get rid of this nigga, man. It's old niggas. I, got I, I, I don't need no help for LL Cool J, man. I hope he got. I, I think you know he posted some bars the other day. I don't think to you, to me, but I. Re but I reposted them and it was just funny. You know what I mean? But I don't think it was to me. It was I just funny. It was funny. I know. But yeah, I love, boss like, is just I know, funny I in 2020. It, it, it's it's going to be funny until he reply. Until, until, <laughs> hey, until, let him reply. Until this mama. Until, 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 all right, man. If he replied, hey, it's, hey I'm, I'm, I'm even more famous, man. If LL diss me, oh, man, I'm really on the What you going to do if, if mama say knock Freddie Gibbs out? 
<laughs> oh man, that's one of my favorite songs, man. I, I, you know, if he give me some bars, I might rap on that beat, man. <laughs> all right, so we're all blowing this out of proportion. There's nothing really brewing nah, between you. Can't L. beef without L. Not at all. All right, man. good thing I love for you, man. Hopefully, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good thing but for I'm you. But I'm not worried about it, though. No, 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 no but it. it's still good for you, nigga. <laughs> Why is it good for me? <laughs> you think LL want this smoke? Who wants yes. this smoke? What? I'm telling I how mean, many how many different ways I got to say yes. <laughs> I think LL would welcome the smoke from Freddie Gibbs, and I think I he, think, uh, I think he <laughs> think he would be it would be a sleepwalk. Historically, <laughs> LL has wanted the smoke with everybody. with everybody. So who the fuck are you? That's what I. That's what I like about LL, man. That's that's why he's one of my favorite rappers because he mm-hmm. wants the smoke. And you know what I mean. And he raised a generation of niggas that want the smoke like me, and I want the smoke too, nigga. <laughs> this nigga's media train, man. I can't never trip. I can't never trip Freddie up. Niggas ain't falling for Come you, on, man. Hey, Fred, I what want you, the smoke too. What you did? What you did for the new year, Fred? Oh uh, man, I just chill with my kids, man. Brought in the new year, man. You know what I'm saying? That's all, dog. I ain't do much. I just chill, man. You know, I just want to make it into 2021 and go and go get the Grammy. You know. There you go. That's I like true. that. Look at you, Grammy won, nominated. Won awards from the colonizers. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> they just, they just, they just postponed the Grammy. So you know, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah they just postponed it. I think it's gonna be in March now. Yeah, you. Oh shit. You think you gonna win? I, I, I think I got a strong possibility to win. Yeah. <laughs> great album for sure. It's yeah, great. Album. I think I had the, I think I had the best rap album this year. So yeah, I, I you know, if you know, I, I'm glad. You know, I already won. They nominated me, so you know, I'm good. But if I think I got a strong chance to win, yeah. I ain't hear no Freddie Gibbs diss track to all the people that said your album shouldn't have been the best album. I ain't hear none of that neither. <laughs> I ain't hear, I ain't hear nobody say that to me either. Oh. Mm. He's listening. Oh. He ain't hear nothing. Yeah, see, <laughs> trying to make him I hear. I hear. I ain't hear nobody step out there and say that. I ain't really hear that. So you know, hey Freddie Once Gibbs, I that, I, you I rap some bars for him. you rap niggas gonna have to deal with my cultural critiques this year. I'm done being nice to y'all. When y'all trash, you I'm saying it. You shouldn't be nice to these niggas, man. If, yeah. if, hey, man, if I didn't deserve to be there, I'll say, you know, I shouldn't be there. You know what I mean? But, you know, I really think I deserve to be there this year. So, you know. I do. Agree. I do, I do I agree. too, Fred. Absolutely. I do too, you know? honestly. And I think, and I respect your opinion. I think if you thought that I didn't, you'd be like, nah. You know what I mean? And, you know, oh, I would tell right. you. Yeah, no. Yeah, I would, you, I would, would, you would know if I came with some commercial stuff to get a Grammy and I did all of the technical industry stuff to get nominated. You would know if I did that, but I didn't do any of that. So, you know what I mean? That's why, you know, I think my nomination is respectable. What's your strategy to get money in 2021? Are you coming right back with music? Um, I'm definitely coming, you know, with music, you know, at all times. But, uh, you know, I mean, the money been good. You know what I mean? I, you know, we ain't got no show money, but, you know, other than that, I think, you know, everything's been moving in a positive direction musically. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to come back with some music. I did a movie in 2020 so you know i might be doing more of that you know See, what i mean i shot a lead role in a movie so you know that's that movie money better than rap money so you know i might be doing that a lot more <laughs> I told, yo see man i told parks and mall that your money was good freddie give they kept talking about jeezy had it <laughs> yo get the oh, fuck man. out of here they kept talking about jeezy first of all i'm never counting no niggas Why? pockets oh, oh, his no. money i is told that. you he was oh, like, oh, you no, never man. told me nothing like never, that nigga, i don't give a fuck about what none of these jeezy never me and I love Jeezy, man. We never exchange no money. Though. Freddie Gibbs, so I'm kidding, good. man. We love Jeezy up oh. here too. We love you too, man. I'm joking around. I'm joking around. Listen, man. I'm glad that you had a good, a good New Year. I hope that you win the award as well. Uh, yes. Great album. Friend of the show. We Appreciate love you, man. We hope to hear some more music soon. Man, thank y'all for having me, man. Album of the year, man. Vote for me. You, are you a Grammy voter? Vote for me, please. I'm not voting for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Gibbs, we love you, nigga. I love, bro. One. All right, so already I love when this happens. Shout out to Freddie Gibbs, by the way. Of course. Uh, I love when this happens where one of the members of the pod stands firmly in a few different positions on a few different cultural takes. Mm. And then at some point, they have to look in the mirror and make a decision between the choices that they have made in this podding life. Mm. And here we are, first pod of the year. And God has put Maul in that very position. Maul is an adamant the baby fan. That's true. The baby supporter. That's true. From early, not just when, not just when the song started hitting, mm-hmm. from from back back in the days. Mm-hmm. True. Maul is also adamant in his Tory Lanez position, mm-hmm. which is if you shoot a black woman, if you shoot, you shot a black if, woman. Yeah. I said if. Mm-hmm. I said if. Mm-hmm. Remember the young boys. If you shoot a black woman, 
<laughs> you are to be banished and exiled forever, and I don't want to hear from you or see from you ever again in hip hop. Correct. And now, as we are recording, word is breaking that there's a video being released with Tory Lanez and the baby. This is from Tory Lanez's Instagram. He added the baby, and it says song plus visuals on the way. Hashtag 2021 umbrella. Drop an umbrella in the comments if you are ready for this. Quite naturally, uh, they have received backlash from the internet, namely the baby, because wow, how could you work with this guy if he shot a black woman before we get all of the information? I'm assuming that's what it is. I'm recording, mm -hmm. so I'm not seeing what they're saying, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, because that's your guy. Yeah, I fuck with the baby. Exactly. Uh, what is your... And what also, is your so not just, just a black woman, but a black woman that, from what we've seen, he's worked closely with in the past yeah. and oh the baby he has yeah. a work, he has a work hey. that's true you're right about that Rory they, 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 I the didn't even think about kind of the hand in hand of two years ago in 2019 they kind of came up together and worked together performed together videos together like they was the, the 2019 combo yeah yeah um again you know if the alleged you know story is true then you know how I feel about it. Um, but with that being said, I can't expect everybody to stand on the same things that I stand on or walk the way that I walk. So, you know, this is music, the music business. I mean, and I, I guess that's the way the baby is approaching it. But he's receiving backlash because obviously people feel like he shouldn't align himself with somebody that's facing these charges or these allegations. I can understand that as well. Um, and then, too, a lot of people still haven't forgot about the, the baby's uh, incident with uh, a woman in the club where he uh, he hit a woman in the club and dealt with something about um, I don't know if that ever went to court or anything like that. But he was in a little bit of a situation where he had struck a female in the club. And Allegedly, because some people say when they looked at the vid, he didn't actually touch her. Well, alleged. I'm just saying that whole thing was a, debacle, it yeah. was a it was a thing. Mm -hmm. So that might be some of that too. Like people feel like, yo, listen, we kind of overlooked that a little bit, but now you're aligning yourself with somebody that's still facing these allegations and these charges. It just looks a certain way. So people naturally will respond and feel a certain way. But either way, this is the music business. So this Again, changes. This doesn't change your view of the baby at all, or how you. No, no, to his I'm, music. I'm uh, Joe. I'm past. I'm past feeling like, you know, these artists and these dudes need to walk the way that I walk and have mm -hmm. the morals and integrity that I have. I don't put that on anybody. I can only be me. I can only do what I do and and move the way that I move. This is the music business. The baby obviously saw this as an opportunity to make music, to sell music. And um, you know, if that's what he chose to do, then who am I to you know, he's done he's he's been successful. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm nobody to tell him how to move in his his career. So, you know, I, I, I can't listen to it, but you know, though because he, I could maybe try to understand, not cosign, but understand if a up and coming artist or an artist that is in need of a look or in need of the quote unquote attention to do this. Mm -hmm. But when you're already one of the biggest rappers in the world, mm -hmm. to then go with one of the more hated rappers ever mm -hmm. at the moment. See, I wonder why you would understand I, I'm it, trying to make it differently make sense, that way. All. Like it's the music business. I never, I never get that. Like y'all would understand it better if it's someone that needed a look. Got that part. But now that it's someone who didn't need the look at all, why can't your brain still seem make sense of it somehow? Like, all right, he don't need the look. So what? Is, what does that tell you about why he did it? That's kind of my question uh, that I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, to that point, you don't need the look. And mind you, I, I'd be more judgy of the people that do shit for the look. But this is still well, what if his position is, listen, I saw Melly recently. I was asking, hey, I wonder what's going on with Melly in mm -hmm. regards to her being signed to the label. But How's she doing? You they seem fine. I didn't speak to her, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying from watching, Tori did some shit for her for her birthday. They seemed real happy. She defended uh, his actions when they tried to crucify her on the internet. Like She defended his actions? She defended her affiliations with him. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Not him shooting someone, but just basically repping for his innocence. Okay. And, okay. In, and, and in turn, repping for why she still fucks with him. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, yeah, the baby don't need no look. So why don't we just assume that he's on the side of people that that is saying what Melly is saying? I'm, I'm fucking with Tori until I'm not. Until, oh, yeah, it, this, until, it, until it is proven that he has done this beyond a reasonable doubt, then I'll banish him. But until then, I'm rocking with him. 
So Meg responds and says that shit was old and not cleared. Crybaby video dropping soon. Okay. <sighs> I don't know what that means, but okay. I guess she's saying that <laughs> the song that, that song and video is old and not cleared from the baby. And, oh. if she, and if she's saying that for a fact, oh. I would assume that somebody from Meg's team reached out to the baby. So that wasn't the baby that posted this. that? No, that was Tori. The no, baby didn't Tori. post anything about that video? Oh, That man. was Tori that posted that. Oh, okay. So my nigga's still a real nigga nah. then. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, look at more. Uh, I mean, I, I, listen. They bailed, I fuck, they bailed nah, you that, out, huh? No, but, I mean, only because... In just watching the baby over the past few years, I just kind of have a feel to for a real the type of dude he is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, again, I'm not I'm not judging him if he wanted to do this and this is something. And you know, it's, it's the music business. I understand it. You know, people people make their moves, they do what they do. But it would just it just would have me looking at him just a little like, uh, okay, you know. Yeah, Yo, you know what kills me? It kills me how we still look for integrity in artists today. I'll be honest with you. And people, or, or people. It's not even about the artists. Just in people, I look for integrity. I don't give a fuck what you do for Pe- a living. People, just have yeah, some integrity. Artists even less. <laughs> well, that goes back to what I said about our culture being so hypocritical. It all ties into that. Like, it's a lot of things that we'll do. Like, this whole uh, Pop Hunter. Is that the, 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 the artist's name? Like, people wanting to cancel him because he snitched when he was 14 and he saw his best friend get killed. Something like that I was reading. And now, the, you know, uh, little Uzi is saying he wants to take him off the, the record. He doesn't want to be on a record with him. But there you are, taking there me are, off of songs because I snitched when I was 13. I've been, yeah, I've been catching little but this is, but this is, but this is the But this is why it's hypocritical, hypocritical because we know grown men in this industry that have snitched. And we still download, download their music. And we still go to their shows. And we still support them. So it's like at 14, you're going to crucify well, somebody? I'm the first one to tell people that I have outgrown. Oh, hey, 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 whoa, whoa, mm-hmm. whoa. <laughs> Look at Freddie Gibbs scared somewhere. Um, <laughs> I'm the first one to say that I have maybe outgrown some of the stigmas attached to hip hop. Never hip hop, because I'll just never do that. But some of the shit that just comes along with being a rapper, some of the stereotypes and just the stupid shit we're supposed to think because we rappers or rap fans. No, I'm not doing that. But it's not, not again, I'm not going to just rap. I'm just talking about in general, just as a person, have some integrity, have some morals. Like, that's all I'm talking. I don't care what you do for a living, what your career, what your talent is. Just have some integrity with, with whatever you do. And that's the problem with hip hop. It's like it's real hypocritical. They want you to have integrity and morals when it's apply it applies to them. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? But not like in general. Or until something comes out. Yeah. And you know it's like saying? I just can't I can't subscribe to that, man. Which is why I just listen to music and you know, I I don't really put too much stock into the artist anymore. If it's good music, I I fuck with it, I listen to it. But I'm not really looking for any of these artists to to kind of, you know, hold their integrity and their morals to a high standard. I'm not doing that no more. Well, cuz a lot of information gets passed down in ways that it's hard to even know if this kid, I don't even know who the kid you're talking about. Pop, what was his name? Pop Hunter. Pop Hunter, I don't even know who that is. Yeah. But we're getting that information about him snitching when he was 14, mad hands down. It's not second hand, it's not third hand. It's like right. a millionth hand. Mm-hmm. How am I supposed to hold, and I've never listened to him, mm-hmm. but how am I supposed to hold him accountable? A, for something they did when he was 14. Mm-hmm. B, something that may not have been snitching. I don't really know mm-hmm. what the situation was, so I'm not going to. Mm-hmm. You know, go too deep on that. But right. it may not, if you saw his man get killed and told who killed his man, right. that's not really snitching. No. When Listen, you're 14, no. Hip hop yeah, was just... calling, they were, they were not all of hip hop, but a small section of hip hop was trying to call me a snitch because um, there was a picture came out where I was talking to police after dude tried to shoot me in the head. And I was like, wait, huh? And I still didn't snitch. <laughs> right. I didn't yeah, cooperate. No, that's not, that's I didn't not, take a stand. Yeah. I didn't you're do gonna, any of that. You're gonna, the cops are going to question you if somebody tried to shoot you, <laughs> if somebody robbed you, if somebody <laughs> shot you. Like, but right. I'm just you're going to be interrogated by the police. I'm just, right. speaking, so how, the subpoena. I'm just right. speaking how fickle hip-hop could be, man. Like, they'll see a picture and say, ah. Oh! Yeah, like, that's, that's man, stupid no. shit. That's, that's, that's stupid shit. We're not entertaining that. Yeah. But this is funny that Meg posted this. Because I don't really, I don't keep Why up with all this shit. Why respond? And again, I'm not, you know, Meg is free to do whatever she wants. But of I'm course. saying, why? Yeah. Like, y'all don't, well, I, this has been like an ongoing saga. I'm not even starting my 2021 talking about this shit. But like, 
These niggas just been replying to each other inadvertently for mad long. Yeah. That's all. I mean, if you were the victim of... Man, let this shit play out in court. Huh? Huh? She's replying on the baby's behalf, no? Saying, hey, no, he's not doing a video with... I don't care why she's replying, Rory. I don't care. I don't care why she's replying. I'm on the side of not replying. But I'm saying, I think she's replying for his behalf because the baby probably wouldn't reply to that bullshit. You don't reply to bullshit. Oh no, the baby so wouldn't reply to that. The baby it. wouldn't be so saying none of this shit. To reply to it. So I think Meg is replying on his behalf. Man, everybody do what's best for them. I get it. I guess. I guess it's nasty to me, and I hope they rectify this soon uh, through the proper channels. I'll say that. Yeah. yeah, but that looks away on his part because she has a video in the, out with the baby now, and, and obviously a video coming soon, and then he would post that he has a. A song and video with him dropping soon. It just, it's, it's just, it just seems a little. It's just weird. Is all. You're not asking me to have courtesy for someone who I have the same feature as who I'm, who I have a beef with, are you? No, I'm. But there's been <laughs> things before this though, like certain likes on comments about the whole situation, certain co- certain replies to people saying things about the situation. Tori, he's 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 been doing a lot of little low shit that you have to catch. But he's been he's been doing that. No, he's been vocal. He he's been vocal. And all right, truth coming to light soon. All you niggas about to be wrong. I told y'all it's about to be lit. Yeah. And then what y'all gonna say? He's he's been he, kind he of vocal to. in that. <laughs> yeah, he has. Um, but you yeah, know, he, he, must, he must know something. He must have spoke to his lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Probably you, a good idea. Hey, that's good when you speak to your lawyer and they get you to feeling good about some shit. Oh man, that's always a good feeling. Shout so, out to them. That's a little scary. <laughs> huh? Or that can be scary and detrimental when your lawyer's lying to you. It's not all good. Yeah, when your lawyer. I just has, need you to pay me. When your lawyer has nothing to say, and you know what you're paying them per email. <laughs> yeah, talking about Method Man. Huh? No, you didn't watch Power. No, but I'll be honest. When I, when, what, from what I'm seeing out there, they're gonna make me go back and look at Power, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be so angry if I don't like it. You're not, not gonna like it, but it's kind of good in a way. Then why am no, I watching I, this? I why are they making me watch I'm not it? Watching that shit. Why are they telling me that the, this Power finale was one of the better finales <laughs> in Power history? That's uh, why do they want me to go back and look at I'm Mary? Cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm cool. Why are they Mary, trying to make yeah, it sound like my 40 year old self is gonna enjoy the story of Tariq? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm cool. I'm cool. It's more than just Tariq. Now they want me to go watch the upbringing of Canaan. No. (laughs) (laughs) You not fucking with that? And listen, y'all know how I feel about 50 and his shows. I support everything he does. Mm -hmm. I really love... He had a great year. I love him in this TV space. Hey, For Life was one of the first shows to come back from the little break. It was. Mm -hmm. One of the first ones to get right back to it. Still fire. I can't wait to binge it. (laughs) I haven't still, watched it, any yet. It's still fire. So, I mean, I support 50 what he does. I'm just not relating to these new stories. I've said that before, so I'm not beating a dead horse. But the public, y'all are making me say, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. I'll go back and watch the finale. I I've mean, been I'll, enjoying it, but it's not the super high quality TV. Sit down. Nigga, no, you calling it? What's it? Fourth and 10? You calling a timeout, nigga? <laughs> no, he, he's correct. These niggas get raises and now they want to stand up and say timeout and shit. Power oh. talk is not that important. Did y'all raise go through? <laughs> Both of them They went through already They hit They hit Yeah man <laughs> Good evening Hi there How you doing Dr. Fauci Dr. Fauci How you doing How are you I'm good How are you guys Good good well, good We're looking for you To tell us how we are Is what we're doing Okay we, You ask good. me I'll give you the information I can Good That we're, sounds good We're gonna have a nice Fun loving Little segment here we're probably a little different from some of the press you've done, so just bear with us, okay? I'm with you all the way. I love it. I love it. Your people told us they told me you were with us. I like that. All right, so we're live. We're good. Dr. Fauci, are you good as well? I'm good. All right, so we have a really, 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 really special guest here. Uh, I want to say that we're honored to have you, and your talking points have been points of contention here on this show. We have... Dr. Fauci joining us. Let me hit the round of applause for such a, here we go, there we go, for such an esteemed gentleman. Dr. Fauci, in our culture, we do something called gunshots. We don't want you to be scared if you hear gunshots. Yeah, that just means one. that we salute you. There you yeah, go. There's yeah, a gunshot. Yeah. Let's give him a gunshot. <laughs> you know 
Dr. Fauci, welcome to the Joe Budden Podcast. How you doing? I'm well, thank you. Uh, listen, man, let's let's get let's get right into it, Doc. It seems, right? It seems that you're on a press run. Are you on a press run? <laughs> and when is your album coming out? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you've been on a press run for a good year. You so. say on a, yeah, it's been about a year. It's it's um, it's been a very unusual year. Mm. This is a, a historic, terrible outbreak that we've been subjected to, and my main job is to develop the vaccines and the drugs and the things for the treatment and prevention, as well as being what I'm doing with you, trying to spread the word. Uh, about how people can keep safe and particularly when we get a better accessibility of vaccines that everybody should be taking a vaccine. So that's what I do. Well, that's where that's where my line of questioning stems from, Doc, because if you're here with us and boy, am I happy that you're here with us. To me, a press run signifies a message needing to be heard. And for such an urgent message like this, Why wouldn't a ticker just come across our screen, no matter what we were watching on television? Why wouldn't something just come across our phone? Like, why is this sole responsibility seemingly on your shoulders? Well, you know, it it isn't. There are a number of other people that are out there. I do it a lot because I, I, you know, I, I feel I can communicate well at multiple levels with multiple levels of, of people, you know, the, uh, school kids, adults, um, people who are working in white collar, blue collar, whatever, because that's my background that I can communicate well. And that's the reason why I do it. Um, And it it works. I mean, I think if you be straight with people, be open and honest and talk straight language with them, they'll hear what you have to say and understand. And I think that's as important as some of the science that we do is to get people to understand why it's important to do things like protecting yourself from infection, your family and your community. Yeah, but are we going about it this way because the government's idea of what's better for the American people is different from what the actual health board and the health people think is good for the American people? No, if what you're talking about is more public service announcements, you know, I I think that you got a good point there. There probably should be more of that. The CDC does some of that. Um, I think we always need to be out there more. And that's the reason why I put the extra effort into being out there with the media, because I think it's really important to get the message to the American public. Well, how much were you how much were you either silenced or suppressed with delivering some of that information last year, especially with the election happening? You know, not really very much at all. It's it's a very interesting thing with regard to getting out on the press. Sometimes you're out there a lot and there's no problem. Other times, you know, it, there, there's an inhibition for doing it. It hasn't really been consistent. One of the things that's important to understand is that since I represent the government, because I work at an organization, the NIH, which is part of the federal government, Mm -hmm. that when I get asked to go on things like Sunday shows or major network and cable in the evening, it's important to get cleared by the communications people in the White House. Sometimes you get cleared with no problem, and sometimes you don't. It's really, in many respects, unpredictable. That's the reason why there are flashes where you might see me on TV a lot, and then all of a sudden you don't see me for a while. That's yeah, but, something that's not in my control. Yeah, but when you say, when you speak to things that aren't in control, when you mention White House, a uh, couple of words that comes to mind come to mind for me is uh, capitalism and consumerism. How much of that plays a part in this? No. Tell the I, truth. Tell the truth. No, I'm telling you the truth. I mean, I, when I'm out here... I think you can bet the farm that it's going to be the truth. And I'm going to tell you what really is going on. Uh, I have never, ever uh, used any political issues to prevent me from telling the truth to the American public. And I've been doing this now for almost 40 years. 
whether it was back in the days of HIV AIDS in the 80s, when I first started doing it, to influenza, to Ebola, to Zika, the one thing you can count on is that you ask me a question, I'm going to give you an honest answer. Okay, awesome. So honestly, tell me how you felt when Trump was telling the American people that we should drink bleach and that heat would effectively get rid of this. Well, I wasn't there when he said it, but I certainly think that that was not a good thing because there were so many people there who would have been interpreted that and perhaps have hurt themselves. And that's the reason why the CDC and the FDA and everybody else and myself included literally the next day said, hey, that's something you should not be doing. Don't interpret those words to think that that's something you should be doing. But, Doc, the those actions are what says to people like me that the health people and the government may not be aligned. Well, you know, there were things that I think you're aware of that were said at the level of a, polit a politician um, that I disagreed with openly. I mean, if you go back and look at the history of this year, there were sometimes things that were said that I disagreed with, such as whether or not the drug hydroxychloroquine works or does it work. You know, it's very clear that the scientific data indicated that it is of no benefit in people with COVID-19. And there were many people, not many, but some that were saying that it worked. And I got up there and said that it didn't because I speak not by any political ideology. Everything I say is based on scientific evidence and scientific data. And the scientific data indicated that something does not work. Therefore, I say it doesn't work. So you are not incentivized in any other way outside of the good fortune of the American people uh, in your decision making? That is 100 percent true. Got it. Quick question, Doc. You were around for uh, President Reagan and the, and the AIDS in the 80s when that came. Would you compare President Reagan's dismissal of AIDS in the 80s to President Trump's dismissal of COVID? No, they were really very different. The issue what happened with President Reagan is that he didn't dismiss it. He, he did not give it the bully pulpit of the presidency to get out there and embrace the people who were suffering from it. Because at the time, remember, it was mostly, almost all men who have sex with men. Mm -hmm. and, and and injection drug users. Mm -hmm. And he didn't, he, what, what, what he did is that he lost an opportunity to use the, 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 what we call the bully pulpit of the presidency to give a good message. He never really went out there and dismissed it. He just should have put a little bit more effort in. And that's the reason why back then I had to step up and be talking about it to the public and it's really interesting because I was the face of the federal government. <laughs> and mm -hmm. when the activists saw my face, they said, well, he's for the government. Mm -hmm. And they started, you know, demonstrating against me until I brought them in and said, hey, wait a minute. I'm with you guys and ladies. Right. <laughs> I'm I feel on like your some side. Of that's Let's figure out how we can help each other. I feel mm -hmm. like but some of that's happening now. That's what happened. Yeah. I feel like you're going through some of that now. Am I wrong? I feel like you've been uh, villainized to some degree by certain, uh, you know, sexual. You've been villainized. You have been. How do you how do you, how do you deal with that part even? Well, you know, I focus on what my goal is, and this gets back to something you said a, a minute ago, Joe. That my main and only um, uh, uh, goal or domain is the health and the safety of the American public. That's the only thing I care about. Um, so all the other stuff, you know, the adulation, which is nice, as well as the threats against my life, which are not very nice, <laughs> <laughs> as well as people publicly criticizing me, calling me a liar, calling me a fake news kind of thing. No, I don't like that, but I don't let it bother me because to me, that's just a distraction. And it, I don't want it to distract against what I really want to do is to do things like develop a vaccine, which we were successfully did. Now the goal is to make sure people take that vaccine, 
because it will be life saving for them, their families, as well as for society. I want to so get all that other stuff, Joe. I don't. I, I that doesn't bother me. I want to get to the vaccine, but I don't want to gloss over it. So you're saying the death threats and things of that nature don't really affect your psyche or paranoia at all. No, it personally. Doesn't. Wow. It doesn't. I mean, I mean, obviously, I have to have federal agents who protect me all the time. <laughs> you got the people with you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, you got the boys with you. Okay. Yeah. I would feel safe, too. All right. So yeah. we got so we got a vaccine that they say is coming. A, how, cou- a couple of them, how right? many vaccines are coming, Doc? Well, there are two that have been proven to be very, very efficacious and safe. We have another one that's that just finished the clinical trial likely we'll get a look at the data at the end of January. I believe, though you never want to get ahead of yourself and predict something until you actually see the data. Mm -hmm. But another company is going to be coming online with with doses probably in February. And then there are two other companies that are in trial right now. Totally, we're supporting directly and indirectly six vaccine candidates, five of them have either completed clinical trial or are ending or in the process of ending the clinical trial. So within a period of time, we're going to have at least five candidates that are going to be ready to go. Okay. Are any one, are any one of these vaccines more recommended than the rest? No? Well, I tell you why. We only have data on two of them, Joe. That means that we only can pass judgment on two of them. And interestingly... The two of them, the one from Moderna company and the one from the Pfizer company, they're almost identical. They are both 94 to 95% efficacious, which is really huge. That is a really, really good vaccine that's 94 to 95% effective. Is, are there, are, will this be administered differently contingent upon age? No. Uh, it's the prime followed by a boost. When you get the Moderna product, you get an injection. 28 days later, you get a boost. When you do the Pfizer, you get injected. 21 days later, you get a boost. Doesn't matter how old you are. We haven't proven yet that it's safe and effective in children, but that study will be done in the next couple of months. Don't you think that's important? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very important. And the reason we delay is that children are vulnerable, Joe, and you want to make sure that you're dealing with a product that's really safe and really effective in healthy adults before you subject a child to it. That makes sense. Quick question, Doc. How come we never uh, shut down the airlines if, if, since this COVID is so airborne and it's so contagious and people, you know, they space us out before you get on the plane. Yeah. You have to stay so many feet apart. But then once you get on the flight, you just, somebody sitting right behind you. That's doc, not six feet apart. There's been a lot of traveling, Doc. I don't know if you've been in airports. I've been no. all over the place. No, I know that. I haven't traveled in almost a year because of the fact that just the question you asked before, I've been working in you know, literally 18 hours a day since January mm-hmm. with no days off. I don't have time to get on a plane. Mm-hmm. But you're right. There is danger anywhere when there's people who are infected. But you know what they have on planes, that the circulation and the filtering of the air Mm -hmm. is pretty good. So there really have not been a lot of infections transmitted on planes that you can definitively document. Mm -hmm. So even though intuitively you would think it's the worst place to be because you're cooped up Mm -hmm. in a closed place Mm -hmm. for an hour, two hours, three hours in particularly short flights, there really has not been a lot of infection that's transmitted on a plane. So even though we kind of knee jerk think that that's a bad place to be, in fact, in reality, it's not been bad. What do you say, Doc, to the person that caught COVID, maybe was asymptomatic or didn't have the roughest of times on it? Uh, Why would that person be inclined to take this vaccine? Well, that's a great question. And the reason is we do not know how long the protection that's afforded by someone who's been exposed and infected, how long that lasts. And the reason is there are similar viruses like coronaviruses that are maybe 15 to 30 percent of all the common colds that you and I and everybody else gets. That gets recurrence. So you can get reinfected with the same virus. I'm not going to let you do that. I'm not going to let you I'm not going to let you 
I'm not going to let you speak to the American people's fear. What I'm saying, Doc, is for the person that don't have any fear, for the person right. that got it and is totally fine with the effects that it had on them specifically and is saying, hey, if I get it again, I'm cool. What do well, you not, say to that not, person? Not guaranteed, Joe. It, it, you're no got guarantee it. to be cool. Got it. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you're not going to be cool. <laughs> I got it. No, I understand what you're saying. What do you say then? What do you say to black and brown women who are who die at uh, hospitals disproportionately? Those numbers are different. What do you say to them uh, about trusting some of the words from uh, our health officials? Yeah, of course you understand why. What I'm saying is, of course you understand no, I, why some I people are skeptical. No, I got about you. any word from health officials or the government. So there's some reluctancy there. What no, do you and say? The reluctance is understandable. It's understandable because if you look at the history of how black and brown people have been treated by the federal government in medical situations, dating all the way back to the Tuskegee, the shameful Tuskegee mm -hmm. uh, uh, experiments, and even others that have occurred since then, there's a reason to be skeptical. But what we're saying is that safeguards have been put in place since then that would never allow that to happen again. And black and brown people who suffered disproportionately from COVID-19 is a reflection of so many things that's wrong with society, particularly the underlying comorbidities that black and brown people have. That is mm -hmm. not a yeah. racial issue. It's an issue that is called the social determinants of health. Mm. From the time you're born, the lack of accessibility to good diets, the lack of accessibility mm, yes. of an economic status that will allow you to take care of your health. So as a group, with exceptions, obviously, there's more hypertension, there's more diabetes, there's more obesity, there's more heart disease, in black and brown people than there are in the general population. Well, I'm going to challenge. And, well, and after you say all that, we also happen to be last on the totem pole in America. So at some right. point, racism would have to come up in conversations of health care, right? Because when you talk about people from impoverished neighborhoods <clears throat> or people that don't have the best health care situation, health insurance, whatever, aren't, won't we be last in line to get the good stuff? No, not at all. Not at all. You're not going to be last in line. I got to sleep the outside the hospital. What do we have to do? No. All you got to do is then when the vaccine becomes available, go up and say, I want a shot of vaccine and you'll get it. Hmm. That's simple. We need to wrap up. Sorry. Right. Well, listen, do you guys have any last words for all? Um, how how yeah, much longer? I have do one you, if, if I can. But go ahead. How much longer do you see us, uh, particularly New York City, with the indoor dining, because I know that the indoor dining infection rate was very low, maybe 1%, and we had to shut down indoor dining again. So how long do you see before that is something that we completely move past and get yeah. rid of? The, the acceleration of cases in New York are very troublesome and in California. I think you're going to have to see a turnaround of the, of the test positivity to get down much lower before they do that. So, I mean, it's understandable. What I'd like to see is that when you tell restaurants they need to shut down or bars, that the federal government gives more money and support to the people who own those establishments mm. so they don't go out of business. Right. They just keep them over until things get better and they can open up again. My final question and a half, Dr. Fauci. I don't know if sex increases the probability of catching this uh, coronavirus but what do you say to the people that have lost uh, that have lost courtships and romantic relationships because we're unable to take these women outside so they can Instagram things? <laughs> <laughs> like, tell me how I explain to a woman that is cutting me off from sexual activity that, hey, I'm protecting us. Right. Yeah, I think just what you said, the most important thing right now is helping each other save each other's lives. Things that are pleasurable for us have to be put on hold sometimes, but we're going through a historic affront to the health of this world, including the United States. We've just got to pull together and realize that sacrifices are being made 
at every single level, including personal relationships because of that. Let's get through it together, get this thing behind us, and then get back to a normal life. That's not going to work on my Instagram, girls, but I appreciate it. Dr. Fauci, I want to thank you for taking the time. Hi, but, hey, just, just out of curiosity, how long would it take to distribute this thing throughout, throughout the country? That's my final question for you. What, the vaccine? Yes, sir. You know, I think if we put the full court press on it, we can get it vaccinated uh, 85% of the people by the end of the summer. So there's a chance oh, uh, we can go outside this year? Yeah, there is a chance that we can be back to normal, not completely normal. Of course, of course. But approaching normal by some time in the fall, if 2021. Dr. Fauci, I really appreciate you taking the time to- That's to, a good suit, Doc, you look good. with us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, very and, sure. And we support you. Friend of the show, Dr. Fauci, let me get a round of applause, man. Again, thank you, Dr. Fauci. Vaccine coming to your sound clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Vaccine coming soon. Hopefully we can get this thing together, man, and have a real good 2021. Agree. Again, Dr. Fauci, thank you. Thank, thank you. We support you, and we appreciate you. Take care. 100%. Be safe out there. I gotta say, man, the, the Fauster was pretty cool. Yeah, the yeah. guy's good. <laughs> He's good. Hey, Dr. Fauci, ah, ah, ah. you were good. The you were Fauster. Good. Forty years of that. I know. I know. Look at I you know. Understanding the plight of yeah. the blacks. Yeah, I know. You had them flashcards right in front of that camera. I know. Man, when it got hot, old boy hit him like, "Yo, dog, let's wrap this up." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as soon as I heard ninety-five percent efficacious, I said, "Yeah, yeah." All right, Doc. We know. We know. No, Fauster was pretty cool. I'm only disappointed that I didn't, I didn't get a chance to ask him about the vaccine as it pertains to the new strain of COVID. Okay. Now, we'll call Trump next week and ask him that question. Uh, no. you, you'll call. <laughs> you y'all don't want to talk to Trump? No. no. Oh, y'all <laughs> whack, man. Why y'all want to talk to the Don? No, no I'm, Don. I'm cool. Yeah. Even though what I will say is, man, yo, Trump is so stupid, I'm going to miss a little bit of him. Man, I don't know how y'all not going to miss Trump, man. That was yeah, great. y'all hear the tape? The tape that, that, of him pressing the Secretary of State of Georgia or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. About finding 11,000 votes. Go find them. <laughs> Go find them. They're out there. <laughs> How did y'all feel about that? Was that the funniest thing you ever heard or was it one the saddest of, thing you ever heard? One of the funniest Some, things I heard. I have a In dark between, sense of humor, yeah, so. I don't, I don't, politics I don't care about, man. This is all political theater. This is all, this is all, you know, just a performance. I don't care about this shit. They say, nah, our shit is accurate. Mm-hmm. No, we've found. No, nah, it's not. We found things different than you found. Yeah, no, it's not. Your, it's not. Everything. Go was find right. eleven thousand votes. Everything was correct, buddy. Sorry, yeah. I'm gonna miss some of the lunacy. I know it's fucked up to say. That I know as a I get what you're person, saying. But this, again, we're gonna look back at this time and be like, fam, what the fuck was America on? Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm. That's why I laughed through this like, whole shit. Listen, I like Fauci's. Uh, what I will say about the Fauster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like his passive aggressive beef game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love it, and yeah. it was on display for half of the year. Like when Trump was saying, "Oh, this thing is an idiot. Yeah. He's stupid. Why are we listening to him?" Damn, I meant to ask him about how he felt about the same guy that proclaimed he was an idiot uh, is taking credit for his genius. <laughs> Damn it, Fauster. <laughs> yeah, we didn't. So have many questions time. unanswered. Yeah, we didn't have enough time. All I needed college. was three more, three more questions, and we was good. Yeah, yeah I cool. appreciate I, it. I wanted to know why we're being taught and encouraged to take this vaccine and not being taught and encouraged or given the tools to build our own immune systems. Mm. Now you're in my bag, see? See, that's all, all you got to do is go through the black man's plate a little bit. more just like that. Yeah, yeah. They're, gonna, they're gonna hang Rory when he takes that to the whites. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna see? fuck it. I knew Rory, I knew Rory gonna was gonna do. come I, on I know, home. I have a whole notes, like a whole list here of, of plenty, but I, I wasn't able to be part of the conversation, so I'll keep them to myself, but yeah, I had a lot of questions for Fauci. I do think y'all handled that amazingly. That was a really good conversation. I loved listening in on that. I'll call so that nigga back right now. I thought that was really good. <laughs> Hold on, I'll call that nigga back yeah, right now. Yeah, I, 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 I had, Yo, I had a whole clip left, Rory. Trust me. I couldn't. We let him get away. Uh, yeah, I had a whole He only gave us 15 minutes. But he so did a good did, job. He yeah, did a good job. Yeah. I, I thank him for stopping by. Uh, yeah, I, and I, I do appreciate that. It. I do appreciate him just giving us time and talking to our, you know us and the culture. And I do think they, uh, he kind of touched on some of the, the idea of building your immunity up by um, at least acknowledging the fact that people, Diet, especially of black color, people diets, yeah. black people mm-hmm. have a poor diet and have poor access to health care. Yeah. And that is all kind of uh, intermingled. Absolutely. Well, I, I think that could have even went further into housing and isolation and what that does to your immune system as well. Yeah, I, that was a where, question where, where that certain, I... The, this, 
the systematic health and housing crisis that we do go through does add up into COVID and not being able to build your immune system with not having access to certain shit. Yeah. So that that was a whole deeper conversation. Of course, we knew we weren't going to have them for that long. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, have, no, we, have I, we had him for I, I an do, hour? I do think we got at least a good, well, you guys got a really good surface part with the time that we had. And It was I a quickie. We ran we ran a train on him. It was, Rory, it was cool. Rory, Yo. Rory, <laughs> Rory is breaking the rules. Can you even shoot from the bench in your street clothes? Come on, man. <laughs> as soon as Rory's wow, in range, as soon man. as he gets in the parking lot, you know that. God damn it, Rory. <laughs> well, well, no, I think, um, and just since we're on just a quick, serious note, and, and I wasn't able to really be part of that, I, I do think there's a huge portion of, of isolation and what that has done to us mentally, which I do think fucks with us physically as well. For sure. No, that's and been I proven. That's something that's, that's not really been addressed at all. And while that was happening, while the government was so quick to shut us all down, um, I think we also should have been given these tools to build our immune system in the meantime, mm-hmm. rather than let's wait to see a vaccine that hasn't been proven yet. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. That was uh, one of the questions that I had lined up for him as well. Um, just the whole shutdown, because now we're seeing a lot of scientists come out, a lot of doctors saying that the shutdown was absolutely the worst idea and the worst way to handle the pandemic because everything else is up. So I think the doctor said it was it was like trying to kill a mouse with a missile. It was it was just the wrong approach. Uh, depression is up Suicide is up uh, yeah, be, Opioid use is up You gotta be careful with that Because for every doctor That's saying that There's a million doctors That are saying opposite So Yeah, I, yeah I, but I that's understand. what As I'm, long I'm as the scientists are The shutdown was a bad idea But I do think We should have been given Somewhat of the tools Building your immune system Is not something that's new That that information Has been readily available To a certain part of the world Way before the shutdown happened I just think that should have been Added into everything They were encouraging us On the news Rather than hey, let's just wait for a vaccine and y'all sit in your cribs and lose your fucking mind. No, and I agree. For the people that aren't able to have nice cribs or even be able to continue to work, your mental is going to get fucked up too. And we're not even going to talk about that either. That's well, all. And well, that yeah, that's that's, that's why a lot of conversation. This is just me on a, a tangent, so I apologize. No, that's cool. No, but that's what a lot lot of scientists and doctors are are agreeing with. They're saying that it just that approach was just wrong. Well, because I also, so oh, many other things came, came as a result, like. Of course, there's going to be a influx of patients at hospitals if you shut hospitals down or people can't make appointments to go see their doctors regularly like they would. Then once you open things back up, everybody's going to rush to the hospital. It was a lot of things that different scientists and different doctors were saying that the approach was just wrong and that they shouldn't have done it. And and that another one would it would take years to recover from. What do y'all what do y'all think about uh, him saying that by the end of the summer, maybe should have be halfway back to normal? I nah, could, that's big cat. Optimism on his part. I think so. Optimism, um, because I think they said once seventy percent of the population is vaccinated, yeah, that then we can kind of move into o- opening things again. Uh-huh. I won't be a part of that seventy percent myself, but I'm pretty sure we'll get to that number though. I think it's a little ambitious. Um, I mean, I think you know. Correct me if I'm wrong on some of these numbers, but they they were looking to get close to twenty million people vaccinated by the end of 2020 and only 2 million were. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, I'm not going to hold people to their predictions. I know they're in a a tough predicament as well um, and trying to figure this entire thing out. So I'm not just sitting here vindicating that administration, but I, the summer seems a little ambitious, but you know, I'd hope for the best. No, the summer's summer's happening. Uh, It probably won't be in the U S but they shaking ass in the Bahamas. They shaking ass (laughs) in Jamaica. They shaking ass in, in Mexico. So it's places to shake ass in the summer and have a great time. It just probably won't be in your backyard in in in, in the states. What's up with you living in Atlanta and Miami? Hey. Mic check, mic check. One two, one two. Rest in peace, MF Doom, the legend. 2020 just had to send us off with some 2020 news, man. YouTube, if you're listening, we playing Daylight featuring MF Doom. Google it if you don't know about it.
Last day of the year. Yeah. Last day of the year, 2020, 2020s. Uh, and we received the news that MF Doom has transitioned, had transitioned and we had lost him. Rest in peace to MF Doom. Absolutely. Of course, our condolences to his family, friends, loved ones, fans, mm. everybody that was affected by such a major loss. Uh, and this maybe hit me even harder because it was the last day of the year, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. It would have hit me hard regardless, but the fact that we received this news on the last day of the year, in, in spite of the fact that he passed in October. On Halloween, apparently. Mm-hmm. On Halloween. Yeah. yeah. They did a great job keeping that under wraps. Yeah, I believe he's been living in Granada or Jamaica or somewhere, you know, isolated. So I guess it may be a little easier. And he's always been a man of mystery as far as everything in the fucking world. So I'm not surprised that they were able to keep it under wraps, I guess. He passed in MF Doomish style. He did. Right? He mm-hmm. did. He did. Dying, dying on Halloween, and then I don't know if this was his actual request, so I won't. I won't say that for for the family purposes. But it being announced on the last day of 2020 was the most MF Doom way to ever go out. And I don't want to take away from death, but it did make me feel a little better that Doom kind of did that on his own, like in a very Doom fashion. I'm going to die on Halloween and announce it on the last day of one of the worst years in history. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, like, and what a, what, like, what a doom way to go out. In, in a year that uh, I saw a lot of people make the same take, and I apologize for not crediting them, but in a year that everyone had to wear a mask, mm. the man that wore <laughs> yeah. a mask. Oh, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's Come on, man. And then die on didn't, Halloween where you I wear a mask. I didn't think well. of it that way. You didn't go there? Man. Your brain didn't go there? I didn't think of it that That's crazy way. Shit. He's not. A, he's not a doomie. Yeah, all the doomies. Oh, that. that depresses me now. Mm-hmm. Um, I can see that, but I can also see that while I can see devastating. Loving. Yeah, exactly. While devastating, I can see that being a part of a master plan of Doom, the Mad Villain. I'd like to hear more about how he transitioned. Like this was done so, not secretly, but you know, respectfully. I think that he may have been I'll, I'll be battling you, some I health don't. issues. You don't? No. I, I think um, it adds, and this is a very selfish, very selfish, selfish consumer fan way to think. So this is just from that end. His family knowing, of course, but that caricature of Doom and going through the transitions that he did through his career, I don't want to know. I think this is the perfect ending to the comic book. Like from a fan story way that Doom was doing with all his projects and he was him being the villain of hip hop, I never want to know. Like this is the way when they turn Harvey's face at the end of fucking the Dark Knight and kept him the 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 good the good person that he was, even though he was evil at the end of the movie. This is like the same way for me with Doom in his story. Like, I don't need to know. You died on Halloween and and we found out on New Year's Eve on the worst year ever. Let me let's read. Keep, let's keep it this way in the comic book. Let me read this. Uh, and I totally agree. But I understand what you're saying here, Rory. Let me read this from uh, MF Doom's Instagram page. I think this is his wife. Yes, I believe this. so. And it says, begin all things by giving thanks to the all. Mm-hmm. To do Mal, the greatest husband, father, teacher, student, business partner, lover, and friend I could ever ask for. Thank you for all the things you have shown, taught, and given to me, our children and our family. Thank you for teaching me how to forgive beings and give another chance, not to be so quick to judge and write off. Thank you for showing how not to be afraid to love and be the best person I could ever be. My world will never be the same without you. Words will never express what you and Malachi mean to me. I love both and adore you always. May the all continue to bless you, our family, and the planet, all my love, Jasmine, transitioned October 31st, 2020. And when I finished reading this, all love, praise, and respect to MF Doom and his family and friends. Mm -hmm. But when I finished reading this, I immediately said, damn, why didn't I reach out to someone involved with chinks and drop off a Christmas money for his kids? Mm. Why didn't I reach out to, to to pop smoke and provide like I wanted to do more mm. when I finished reading this. I can't imagine being the wife or the loved one or just 
anybody having to deal with such a loss in such a time and have to write this. Um, actually, uh, my family, my family, we lost a really, 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 really close family friend recently due to COVID. And my mom and I got to just talking about shit. Because mm-hmm. that's what happens when people transition. Mm-hmm. Sure. And she was saying, now, hey, if, if you know, if, one, if something happened to one of my kids, if, if I'm not in the nut house, I'd be right there. Like, for the other kid, wherever Joey's at, wherever I'm at, or wherever Veron's at, if I'm not in the nut house, I'm going right there. Mm-hmm. And I said, Ma, you wouldn't be in the, you wouldn't be in the nut house. Like, my mom always taught me, like, when I thought I would go crazy, if she transitioned, she taught me that she raised me to be stronger than that. Mm-hmm. It's like, to deal with it. So when I heard her say that, I repeated it to her. I said, no, you would be fine. Like, you would be okay. And she said, no, I would potentially be in a nut house somewhere. Mm-hmm. It just made me look at this shit like from a different, through a different lens and mm-hmm. from a different angle. Yeah. Uh, and for this to happen <laughs> around the holidays, for this to happen when there's children involved. Um, I shed a tear when like four of Doom's projects were in the top 10 of the iTunes hip hop albums. Yeah. Like I'm sensitive yeah. to this type of stuff. I, I, I am. This shit sold out immediately. I went to go buy. I only have a couple of CDs. I don't have much vinyl. I went to go purchase on his website, sold out immediately. Like, I was shopping, adding to the cart, took a phone call, came back, gone, everything. I really hate that I listen to music differently when the artist passes. I do. Well, the words mean so much more. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, like, they hold different uh, meaning and different weight. More more foreshadowing. Mm-hmm. They hit a little different. But I, I did love to see that. And I did hate to see the fan that says, the, oh, now y'all on Doom. If this is the way that people are going to never dignify that person and put money in his mm. pocket and put money yeah. in his family's pocket, yeah, I support it. If you've never listened to MF Doom ever in your entire life, we're here to encourage you to join the, the Doom family here. We Absolutely. love Doom. Go listen to him. Go discover him. It's okay if you're just now. If you discover me through Doom death, is. that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's fine. And if you never knew me, didn't fuck with me, and maybe still don't fuck with my music, it's still okay to be sensitive to yeah. my human. Just untimely. Be human. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't understand the kids when they... That's back to Maul's point about, like, I outgrow certain shit in hip-hop. I only see this a lot in hip-hop. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm... Uh, uh, yeah, it's nasty. It's nasty. That mass correlation y'all made, I, I, don't, I didn't Yeah, that, shit I didn't fucked do me that. up when I read that. Yeah. I didn't do that at all. Again, rest yeah. in peace. What a career, man. What rest a career. in peace to MF no, Doom. He, uh, his way, his terms. His whole career. Yeah. His whole yeah, career. Dude, I mean, it's Doom, honorable. Doom is in that, that same prince realm as far as I see what corporate is doing to a genre I love and I want no parts of it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I'm going to continue to do it my way and put music out the way I want to. Early on the internet. Early on putting music out directly to the consumer early on the independent label wave, early on me not caring what an image looks like. Just listen to my music. Early on sending somebody else out to do my show. Y'all, thought, yeah. y'all, y'all, y'all didn't invent nah, that. Y'all thought Jeremiah came yeah, up with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Doom. Nah, yeah. Jeremiah got that from the Doomster. Yeah, yeah. I, was, sure. I was joking with Guru. I said, yo, everyone's killing uh, all these, these hip-hop nerds is killing Blueface because he's rapping off beat. Nah, Doom invented that. Doom was rapping off beat first. I mean, like, that's true. Somehow he sounded more on beat after he passed. <laughs> you understood it? Yeah, I was like, damn, you caught, yo. You caught his pocket. You saw what he was trying to do. A lot of his aesthetic, sonically and visually, too, is uh, directly reflected in the music that's happening today, whether it's Griselda or, you know, mm-hmm. in that in that world, the underground hip-hop, mm-hmm. loopy world. Mm-hmm. He was intentionally making just shit with no drums mm-hmm. and not mixing it and putting comic books and mm-hmm. you know theatrical kind of shit in yeah. in the yeah. words and in the imagery mm-hmm. and it's important to to recognize that a true a true artist had. a true artist he, in our he culture he was the closest to jazz a human could be that's not playing jazz right i mean that in like a really just in life way. yeah mm-hmm. uh, and i like to see the outpouring of love from everyone still living yeah. like i like that i don't i'm not checking to see people's fan card <laughs> yeah, no. No, never. No. Come on. That's corny. Yeah, no. OD. Uh, I mean, I, I do hope, you know, I, of course, I know Doom was, was really big on, on the independent shit. And we saw when Dilla passed how the Dilla Saved My Life t-shirts became trendy and 
all this other thing. And I feel like Doom's face with the mask has been sort of trendy as well. I just, I know, pray and hope that this won't become an Urban Outfitters thing. Like, don't buy the Doom shit unless we know it's directly to his family. Because that yeah. is going to become trendy. Yeah. It is going to become the cool hipster shit. Mm-hmm. Don't buy no Doom shit unless we know exactly where the money is going. Because they're going to take it. <laughs> It's gonna happen. Yeah, That's I saw a, shame a couple we gotta streetwear bring up, like hipster clout chasey type shit. Yeah, I seen a couple yep. streetwear type of uh, sites tagging me and shit. Like oh, I made a Doom T-shirt, which is dope. Like nope. I get paying homage, but nah. At the same time, like make nah, sure that money that. is going to the family if you do do anything like that. Yeah, don't buy no Doom shit unless you know where it's going. Yeah, you know, I agree. Um. While we're on iconic legends that have transitioned and passed, uh, my guy Shabadoo from Breaking Mm -hmm. passed as well. Uh, And his name was Aldofo, pardon me if I'm pronouncing this incorrectly, Aldofo Quinones. Uh, And he suddenly passed away at the age of 65. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of you new kids probably didn't see Breaking, but Breaking changed the game. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Go watch it. Yeah, go look at it. For sure. But breaking changed the game back in the day. It had all of us trying to dance with a broom. Absolutely. Rest in peace to Al Dofo uh Quinones. That was that was tough. That was tough. It was like the year, like twenty twenty, just twenty twenty until the very last minute. Yeah. Um we spoke about it before we left. We said don't, you know, because we were saying oh we made it and we here. I'm like, it's just a few yeah, days yeah, left. Yep, yeah, you ain't make a gut. It's a few thing. days left. Um also in sports news, uh Paul Westfall. Yeah, Paul Westfall mm-hmm. transitioned as well. Yeah, um, he was battling brain cancer, I believe. Rest oh, wow. in peace. That just sounds dangerous. Yeah, rest in peace. That sounds really, really tricky. Some of these things I hear the the older people deal with, and I'm like, God damn. And mm-hmm. the younger people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, so rest in peace. Rest in peace to MF Doom. Let me get outstanding queued up. Rest in peace to MF Doom, Paul Westfall, and Shabadoo. Y'all niggas say something while I find this record. How you spell it? O U T. I hate y'all. Y'all don't help me with shit. How do you spell out? O U T. O U T. Yeah, Mo. How do you spell out? Yo, again, rest in peace to everybody that we lost in 2020. Early stages of 2021. Uh, remember, shit is not sweet out there. Shout out to anybody that lost a loved one, family member, a friend, anybody that they cared about. Still real shit going on. Let's not sleep on 2021, y'all. Hopefully Fauci is right and we can come outside toward the later end of the year. Yeah. Hopefully the vaccine works for the people it needs to work for. Uh, I said off, buddy. I said off. Nah, he wasn't finished. He had to let you know. Charlie Wilson, shut the fuck up. No, 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 Joe Biden. Fam, I didn't catch your honor when it aired because I was in Miami. Mm. It aired early, Shaking my New Jersey ass. Yeah. <laughs> but when I got home, the roster, I put it on. Mm-hmm. And you know what happened in the first five minutes that I put it on? A nigga text the judge. <laughs> Yo, I know your son did it. Yeah. I know your son did it. Yeah. Yeah. What a show! Yeah. It's real good. 
<laughs> Yo, it this wasn't been the best episode. Yet. It wasn't even five minutes in. Tex was like, "Yo, dog, yeah, we, <laughs> know, man, we know, we know all that shit. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. got yeah. it. Pack up the money. Hey, disposable green washable bag. Yeah, bring it to the spot. You know the vibes, nigga. Mm-hmm. Hey, when ju- somebody hits you with a capital <laughs> LOL and then the footage of your son at the gas station, pack it up. Yeah, he said, well, no, that money. Well, no, 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 Rory. I won't let you speed into that one. A hey, homeboy was in the middle of Mardi Gras. The judge talking about, I don't think you have it. <laughs> yeah, hey, but, scammer, but here you are wait, running wait, through wait. the middle of Mardi hey, no, Gras. No, 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 no. The scammer dude was confused. Yeah, like, oh, hey, you think this is a hey, game? Wait, <laughs> hey, wait, hey, wait. Hey, what you, what you think I don't got, Judge? Right. I think a judge like the proof. Yeah. Proof? Nigga, hey. I call you right back. Hey, hang up. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna send it right to your phone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where does this show go? I don't even know anymore, man. But speaking of that, what call, was that? that? Think it was weird how regular the voice was when he called. Like they didn't try to throw no sauce on it or make it sound like nah, this cryptic. For what? Dude. It was just some regular ass dude. Yeah, for what? Yeah. We're not gonna play these. Listen, this is how much I want. This is where I want you to drop it off. Yeah, pull up. And, right. Oh, proof? Okay, here, here's the proof. Yeah. That's how the escorts talk to me. Like, when I, when I think I got them pinned up against the wall because I know they're selling pussy, they be like, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't change nothing. Right. Um, I don't know where this show goes. That was episode what, five? Yes. I believe so. Or six? Five. 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 It, was, it was five and I read it. It goes to ten. Yeah, it's five. Fine. We have five episodes through. left of this insanity. I'm hyped. Go Showtime, man. Yeah. Go it's Showtime. Great, great I, show. I, I, I applaud. I applaud you all and the job you're doing. Go Walter White. White. That was his name, right? In, yep. um, in Breaking White. Bad, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah he's, he's about to get on his Walter White shit again. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go he again. He the footage. Yeah. He's on his Walter White shit again. Peaceful, calm. And now the mob's on your Outstanding ass. citizen. And now it's, you got to get grimy. I mean, Facts. Walter White had the cart sell on him. He, he ain't worried about the New Orleans mob. Yeah. Not when he got his son. <laughs> yeah. That's really, the difference. Really great show. Another really great episode. Yeah. How you, th- how you feel about Chet Hanks? I, I, I think he's doing a good job. Chetty? I got some deep dives on that show. What? Oh, break it, break it down. I, I, I have some prediction. Or do you have inside the, info? Because don't do that. Don't be that guy. No, I have none at all. Okay. I have corona. No one's trying to talk to me. Well, I don't um, know if you read a book or something. Read the I wiki think page. The daughter has something to do with this with these text message guys. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I can see it too. I can see it. Or I the- actually went back and rewatched when they were at the cafe if she was on her phone. Mm. Or it could be the uh the mom, his mom his mom's mom, the grandma. Listen, my dukes and the mob is blowing everything up. Oh no! I was talking about. Uh, Shorty doesn't give a fuck. That's that's a fact. I was talking about um, the kid, the the main character, the child's mom that passed, and mm-hmm. his, his mom came mm-hmm. in mad aggressive. Mm-hmm. I could see her having something to do with that too. This is like just <laughs> we just went through this. We was like, oh no, it's the kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it was the guy. We it should have been the whole time. That's yeah. yeah, but but I I put this writing and plot way above the Undoing. Sorry, oh yeah. Undoing. This is this is this wait is a different way type above. It's a different type of writer. It's a different type of. It's a different type of story. Yeah, but the the un the undoing was great. The undoing was great writing though. It we was. all had everyone except the father doing it at some point. Yeah. During the, and it was a, it was a, it was an acting clinic. Yeah. yeah, like it was it was great to watch like a play. I think my disappointment yeah. came from wow, it was such a great watch that y'all could have had more fun with the ending. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The fact that y'all just left it as was from episode one, mm-hmm. I could see people having a problem with that. And if they do that in your honor, too, I don't see how they could do it. Well, right. Because they've, they've been so all oh, over the you know place. Who probably they, they, is. They've shown us how all over the place. You know who, you know who it is. Undoing left us to speculate. It's, it's probably the... This is um, just all over the place. It's probably the, the, uh, the dudes in the SUV, the black SUV at the beginning that were yeah. chasing them. They saw everything. Yeah. yeah. Do y'all think 100%. that uh, the oh, yeah, for, for do, sure. do y'all think that the son that killed the mob son is going to fuck the mob daughter? Yes or no? It's looking that way. Also, that mob daughter. But I was also saying she was in on it. They casted her so well; she looks dead ass like dude's daughter. Yeah, like they had the same face. Yeah, and nose. Yeah, yeah. Well, Sidebar. That's sorry. Racist against Italians. That girl looks like all the white girls from the hood that wanted to fuck us that we wouldn't fuck. <laughs> so, I see so, what you so did Ita- there. So Italian women. Yeah. No, Roy. I see what you did there too, Roy. I, I, 
I had a bad Italian, but that damn Arturo, Arturo Gotti couldn't wheel her from him. Arturo, Arturo Gotti, the boxer? Yeah, rest in peace. Oh. Yeah, yeah I told that story here before. Oh, okay. Don't remember, but well, sounds about right. I didn't win the girl, if that's what you're, no, <laughs> that's I, what you're asking. No, we got it. We got it. Hey, call your ex up yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, no, if he wants you, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> you're a great girl. No, I no, you, you, it's cool. It's cool. I get it. Um, Let's see. Let's see. What were we just on? Oh, uh, uh, your, honor. your honor. I'll be back this Sunday. I'm tempted to just not watch it at all so I could catch a few episodes in a row. I'm not built like that. Not I started um, Gangs of London. Oh, yeah. On Why? Amazon Prime. It said, it, the first episode was really good. Yeah. Yeah. So I started that. A lot of people recommended that to me. Yeah. It's, it's really good. The first episode was really good. I still got to do Mr. Robot. Yeah. Damn, I had a topic I wanted to talk to y'all about, but I think we too far in. I think this one is too important. We should save it to Saturday. Okay. Rap lyrics are now admissible in court. Oh, they they weren't before. No. You now by law, you can use all rap lyrics. Oh no, that's crazy. In court, that's that's really. And nice. we should really deep dive on that one. That, yeah. that would, I think man, that's that way like, too important for us to get into an hour three of this pod. Okay. Yeah. No, that's Agreed. definitely a. But that's pod. In but, I, but I will quickly say that's like if Robert De Niro got arrested for something and they brought up Goodfellas and say, "Look how violent he is." Well, yeah, yeah, that's what's, <laughs> that's that's what's nuts. Gonna, that's what's going to happen. Well, it's a little different again in our culture because this whole new genre of rap hip hop is more gang involved. It's suppression. It's it's it's, 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 it's a lot of gang banging on wax now. So naturally, they they because they've been successful in piecing together cases before using lyrics and songs I, and I creating understand. a timeline. So I mean, we we I, no, this I is just I'm another the court of law. I'm not yeah, no, this is just another. This is just another tool for us mm-hmm. to look at and say, okay, we need to be more responsible and stop doing this dumb shit and stop bringing the feds and the police right to your doorstep. Mm-hmm. That's all. More? Do you think they'll be able to do that? Um, be able to I think Do you think that, They're able to Do I think they will? No Yeah that's what I'm asking No I don't think I don't think these artists will I don't think they will I want us to dive deeper Into this on Saturday Because okay, I, yeah, I, I think This is a really important topic I don't want to breeze through no, this No let's do it I'm down It deserves unpacking Um, Yeah let's build on this later um, Yeah 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 I got you Alright what else is Very important Very important Oh this reads like It's super important Let Does me it? Let me give it to the culture On Monday, roughly 230 Google employees announced they were forming a union with the Communication Workers of America. Mm -hmm. It's open to employees and contractors at Alphabet, Google's parent company. As a minority union, it doesn't need to go through a formal legal process in order to exist. It just needs to announce itself. That part is done. World, meet the Alphabet Workers Union. The news prompted a wave of support from organizers like Senator Bernie Sanders, Ellen Powell, and Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. It also led to some questions. What is a minority union? Isn't 230 members rather small? And why is CWA involved? There. What the fuck does any of that mean? Well, I I was reading the same article. I read a little further down, but they say that a minority union basically allows uh, both people that are contracted employees, or those are two different things, people who are like independent contractors and employees to join. So there's a lot of uh, contracted employees at Google, whereas if you, apparently I didn't know that much about unions, but if you do a regular formal union, it's only for employees. So this opens it up for more people to be able to join, essentially. That are not employees. Correct. That are employed, you know, contract. Okay, 1099, gotcha. 1099 folk. Yeah, interesting. Really okay. Yeah, it's really interesting. I don't, you know, I don't know what the implications are, but it's a big deal. It's one of the biggest companies in the world unionizing. Um, I wonder if that'll hinder people that just work on contract if other companies are, are not into unionizing and you're part of that union, would, would it be tough to get work elsewhere? Because I, I could see someone being I, part yeah, of the union with I would imagine. Google <laughs> and someone saying, oh, you're part of that? Yeah, I'm not going to hire you on some 1099 contract shit. Sorry. Oh, well, I guess it would I, I depend. I can see that kind of being a, a tough place for a contractor to be in. Potentially. everyone else is not on board with it. But it depends on what your side gigs are. Some people are uh, 1099 type of employees, contracted employees, that are still essentially full-time employees. You know, this is what sure. they do. Um, just without the benefits. Correct. 
Like some some companies use 1099 as a way to not give people benefits and shit. I see this benefiting a union more than a 1099 contractor, but that's just me. Yeah, it's interesting. We'll see. Uh, on to more interesting news. Jimmy Iovine sells producer catalog to Hypnosis Songs Fund. Yes. Same, same people. That's the same people? Yeah. same people. Yes. Same, what same company. What the hell? <laughs> Do we know how much this sold for? I think I read somewhere 200 and something million. $200 million bucks. to Big Jimmy bucks. IB. Yeah. Big bucks. Well, his, his production catalog, not his catalog catalog. Mm-hmm. As if Jimmy Iovine needed a spare oh, no, his, 200 million. His production million. catalog is crazy. Correct. Well, I assume I'm just that it's from not the his number. His catalog catalog of everything that he's touched in the music business. I assume that from the number being 200 million. Yeah. Right. That's a lar- rather large number. It is. Well, I think it would be hot, way higher than 200 million had it been what Jimmy's been involved with in the music business, period. I Listen, all of this is intriguing to me. I would just like to see what some of the numbers look like for some of the. I won't say lesser talented, but lesser accomplished musicians. Like we just keep seeing 200 million, 100 million, 75 million, 90 million. I like, I'd like to see what happens when we get down to the, who's in the $10 million ballpark. Who's in the $5 million ballpark. And I'm assuming that once they get all these big people out the way with whatever their future plan is, because I believe there to be a future plan that we don't know. On the chatty house, they were talking about, yo, they're buying catalogs because they're going to license it to the movie. Shut up. Yeah, I've heard that. Shut shut, shut the fuck up. The people that are spending $100 million like nine times over, they're not just trying to license shit to movies. Yeah. No. Sorry. Sorry. Not even close. (laughs) I'm sure they see um, something on the horizon with the, the royalty rate for streams going up. I'm sure they're involved in whatever's on the horizon, which Maybe is so. what I was trying to get Fauci to admit to. Hey, whatever's on the horizon with this vaccine shit, like who's involved? Right. Like, do y'all know something that's coming that we don't know? But yeah, I mean. <sighs> it's interesting. But I can see why some of these older artists are selling because fuck it. I'm 80 years old. Like Bob Dylan, for example. Or even Jimmy's even fairly Jimmy old. Yeah. yeah. I'm not doing shit. Give me the 200. I'm, yeah, well, you take that money and do so other things. Much more focused on the people that are buying it and what they already know and what they're planning for. If you, Yeah, don't try to get me to play the long game at 70 years old. Yeah. Like, I'm going to sell. Absolutely. Well, I mean, if you want to play But you got to think about your family, family, too, now. Yeah, you don't want to just... At, well... But, but, but no, I disagree. I think the people that are in these positions have long before thought about their family no, and, absolutely. Put them, and put them into position. No, but you, you just said you're not playing the long game. I'm saying, you, but I think that um, oh, not at seventy, like you played it already. Yeah. So like now you're looking for the cash out, whether that be one hundred, two hundred million, whatever it is. I'm cashing out now. I'm I've not, also, oh, no, I, I've I think seen people like Jimmy Iovine and L.A. Reid are smart enough to know the long game for their family, and they they do see that selling your catalog now is the long game for your family. You'll have more money in the long run. People that are buying it, I'd like to know what their long game is because clearly you they have one. I've seen I've seen a take, and I think I expressed that with the Bob Dylan analysis that we did, uh, that some of the older artists are probably selling their shit for their family, meaning we've seen it with the Prince Estate families beefing over shit. We've seen it every every estate in the fucking planet. The Prince Estate actually, the uh, the government came back and said, "Yo, y'all fudged some numbers. The estate was worth more than that, and y'all owe us thirty six million dollars." I saw that too. Mm-hmm. Crazy <laughs> craziness. But that's why I could see why someone like Bob or uh, Jimmy or any of the older artists are selling their shit now so they can handle all that shit while they're here as opposed to leaving a huge mess for their family to fight over and hate each other about. Yeah, just to after they're down this hundred million. Yeah, this is what I got for you. figure out royalties as things go. Exactly. Listen, I've said here before, I'll say it again, life gets really funny when you realize that all that you've worked your entire life for, your kids are going to just fuck it up when you leave it to them. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I hate to be the bearer of bad. Especially if you have kids that bad just news. ain't shit. Mm-hmm. Now we've seen we've seen those type of kids come from families where it's uh, like, wait, uh, what? Imagine if we could have put a camera on Jerry Buss's face in heaven when he saw what his kids was doing to the Lakers. Hmm. Not kids, because Jeannie I put did it on a great a le- job. A lesser level. I, 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 yeah, but even mom, that, as a dad, at, at, hold up, Rory. But even that, as a dad. And having to watch your kids beef about some shit now. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, what I'm saying. It's, it's like, all rough. Yeah, let yeah. me split it up now exactly. while I'm here mm. and cognizant and in control. Mm. This is what you get. This is what you get. Goodbye. 
Right. <laughs> yeah, but if I'm unhappy, I'm suing. <laughs> As a kid? You, know, you don't necessarily parent? have to be a kid. I, listen, I watched... I watched family members sue, as an heir. Sue, as an other, heir. Yeah, as an sue heir. other family members yeah. over what a family member left. He meant child, not necessarily. Oh, as a, a young child, no, 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 child. No, 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 not as a kid. As a child. No, no, not as, not as a kid, but as as an heir. As an heir, yeah. Yeah, if I have a disagreement about some shit, send it to the judge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yo, also back to your honor. I've never faced a judge that kind. <laughs> yeah, those, those judges. He in the elevator. Hey, what's the? Was it weed? Well, he was trying to get some yeah. from them, too. So yeah. that wasn't full kindness. I've never faced a judge that appeared that yeah. way. Well, he was trying to get a little like, info, I get, though. I keep getting mad when he looks out for the kids. Hey, man, the judge you're failing, what's the judge's name? He's got a sister that's dying of cancer. Why don't you but, say you was I doing think, that? I'm like, wait, 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 what? <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. that, that started from episode one, though, in the connection <laughs> to the family that he was into. It's annoying me. Dying. It's, it's becoming a theme rather than this is just some cool judge. I've never even seen a judge outside of a courtroom, like just in passing. (laughs) Oh, I I have. Bumping to a judge. I have. have. You see him come right out of 595 Newark in Jersey City. I was a bartender, but the judge in our hometown, judges used to come all the time. Okay. Sorry, Parks, I'm not that cultured. It's not a culture thing. I just happened to work at the bar that the judges like to go to. You never had a job, nigga. (laughs) What the fuck? I I had a job. Parks is telling you about a job he held. (laughs) I had jobs. What job you at? I used to work in the hospital. hospital. He tells us all the time. I'm not. Why is he telling me that when he was 12? I wasn't 12. Only about when he was hospital. interning at the I wasn't hospital. I was 12 years old working in the hospital. <laughs> he was a hospital intern? At 12? No. What you had to do? Run the CAT scans up? Nah. Hey, send us to floor 13. <laughs> Yo, nah, Paul's never taking my CAT scan. I'm Why? Know. Why not? Or, hey, or my cat. <laughs> yeah, definitely or not taking my scan. Not, not any of that. I'm not trusting Maul with shit. Why not? I'm just not more. I'm a trustworthy guy, man. Uh, let's see. What did we just come off of just now? Google and uh, hi- hypnosis. No, we bounced to something else after that. Uh, selling all your parents' shit. And then from yeah. there, we bounced to Prince's estate. There's one more little tidbit. Do you want to do the Dan Lebetard? Dan Lebetard. That's yeah. the one I was thinking about. Dan Lebetard. I had no idea. That's not true. Because I came in here months ago and said, you're letting go of Dan Lebetard finally. Yeah. But I only meant the show. I didn't mean him. <laughs> yeah. Dan Lebetard is a staple at ESPN. Yes. Along with, for me, Michael Smith was a staple. Jamel was a staple. Yes. Skip was a staple. Uh, Stuart Scott, but he passed away. What, what I'm saying is, like, I don't like how they have treated the staples at ESPN, at me ESPN. Me I either. don't. Yeah. Now, Mind you, I might be jeopardizing some opportunities for myself by even saying I don't like it, but I don't like it. I'm curious to see what the long play is because as of right now, the shows are suffering and the, the, the channel in general is suffering. To me, it's hard to find shit to watch on ESPN, right? So put it on from noon to whatever just in the background and it would be, you know, first take and uh, whatever, whatever the lineup was. And now a lot of these shows are gone. A lot of the talent is gone. I'm curious to see how they replace it. But before it was Skip and Dan Dan Lebitar, like I was questioning how ESPN handled their black talent. For sure. Especially in regards to Jamel and Mike and when they were talking all that Trump shit and then seemingly got X out rather quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, But this Dan Lebitar shit, like, and not only Dan Lebitar, but who's the other Mike? It was Mikey and Mike. Mike, Mike Greeny, the other Mike, the big Mike. Mike Golick. Golick, Mike Golick. How they did Golick even. Yeah. Yeah. Like it just looks away. So in combination, when I see tweets like I saw today that said, yo, um, what is the, what's the tweet I saw? Uh, the Chargers fired their head coach, right? Yeah, the black yeah, guy. Yeah. And somebody on Twitter pointed out, hey, ESPN, y'all not slick with your verbiage. Oh, yeah. The way they said uh, relieved of duty for all the white coaches and fired the white, for Yeah, Anthony exactly. Lynn. The yeah. white coaches got parted ways. Mm-hmm. And for the Chargers coach got fired. And, yeah. they, and they clearly showed that. So, I mean, uh, in combination, it just don't feel But right. there's a difference, though. Tell me. There's a difference in being fired and being relieved. And parting or, ways? Yeah. Parting fired ways is, is when because you're, you're amicable not, in the firing. Right. You work together in right. the next steps. Right, right. Fired right. is get the fuck out. I yeah, don't like, care what you're happens not with doing, you. You're doing a shit job. Like, we're yeah, not but happy. then we highlighting that. All right, so why are you doing that to the black coach? Well, did the black coach do a bad job at coaching? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he did. Well, there you go. You're fired. Get out. But Adam Gase did a he bad job. He didn't do a worse job than Adam Gase. 
I'm not saying he did. I'm just saying that there is a difference if between Adam firing. Gase, if Adam Gase was treated with respect on the way out the door after what he did, well, I think franchise. you should be treated with respect anyway, whether you're doing Agreed. a bad job or not. Like, it, when you gave me this job, we agreed on something. We thought it would work. It didn't. That mm-hmm. doesn't mean we have to be nasty and have an argument and all of this. Like, it yeah. doesn't need to be that. Yeah. But I'm I'm only saying that there is a difference in being fired and being relieved because it's a different energy. I'm, you're fired because we we didn't perform well. I'm relieved because we couldn't agree on terms. We couldn't agree on extensions and money, you know, things like that. So it, it's a difference. But no, it doesn't seem not. like in these cases that was necessarily a difference. Because, again, right. Adam Gase was a terrible coach, right. both with Miami right. and the Jets. I get it. I get it. But it's the, the CEO, the, the the team. It's all about who you're dealing with. No doubt. I, mean? I understand what y'all are saying, but where the bitches be at? Oh, uh, Miami. <laughs> yeah, you was just there. Yeah, Miami. Well, right now they're in the Bahamas with, with the boy. Ah. Uh, Great times. Oh, good times. <laughs> so much. Yeah, all oh, good. Great times. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> UV rays. The UV index is really high down there this time of year. Every time. I think I've gained a one up on the boy. No, 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 no. He's ahead of the game. He told you, check the scoreboard. Y'all can't be. Every time. But you, I wasn't you know, looking at the Yeah, score. you got to look at the I scoreboard. Wasn't, I wasn't you looking have at, to keep your I eyes on the scoreboard. I wasn't looking up at the scoreboard. Look at the scoreboard. Well, what I'm saying is, I mean. Mm hmm. I tried to strategically t- time things. So, no. I mean, in the three years that he took off, yeah, no. like I thought I made a little, a few steps closer no. to the girls I like. No, no. And then he buys a yacht. No, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then takes a picture of his yacht. And yeah. becomes a certified lover boy. Yeah. Come on, Certified man. now. Yeah, what are you going to do? I'm just a lover boy. Oh, yeah. yeah you're not certified. certified yacht boy. Not at all. Yeah, you got to work on the certification process. Hey, hey, the, the, whole, <laughs> the hallway to the boy's yacht looked <laughs> more massive than the hallway way in my home my yeah. house that's stationary this is a little different my house don't that's even my house stationary. don't my house don't swim Rory <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no I appreciate you my house don't swim stationary <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was funny yeah, it's just a little difference. A little different. How my hallway that's stationary not as dope as yours that moves yeah, how, how are we gonna take uh, the boys bitches from him he has a yacht and it's a, a jet he got him it's hard it's hard to compete yeah yeah, no, man. Just, just you know, stay world, in your lane. World, that's all. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the key to life. That are meant for you. Just stay. Like just yacht, listen, really bro. Stay in your lane. Life is much easier when you just stay in your lane. It's a good point, Will. I mean, my lane is nice. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's a nice lane. lane. It's just big as all. They could maybe pave it every now and again, but you know, <laughs> the budgets are what it's they are. It's a difference, man. My, it's just a difference. My lane need to be repaved. Yeah, like or at least a little help a highway. Yeah, they got the concrete drillers out there on my shit. <laughs> they, they got they got the cones of them. Yeah, over yeah, yours. just drive around. Yeah, just drive around. Slow it's down, cool. though. Slow down. Yeah, man. It's um, right. let's see what else is going. Look at that hallway. That's beautiful. Michael B. Jordan text you right now. You answering? Why you do that? Oh, <laughs> <by the way. laughs> why Drake did that? <laughs> well, yo. We covered Remember? that. Yo, we covered why, that here before. Why, why we covered that, that like six months nah, ago. Nah, but now that it's out, Drake did that, man. Yeah, 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 Drake did that. It is why, he, why he did that? I couldn't stop laughing at him, <laughs> yeah, man. He was so sincere. He, I thought he was done with just that line. You going to scramble and pack your bags and go to Miami and land in it? I was like, yo. <laughs> I said, Drake, hold on. on. <laughs> yo, but why do y'all let Drake dirty Mac in music? That's dirty Mac. But it's an art to it, though. It's hey. It is. No, no, no. I'm with you. That's dirty Come Mac. You can't do that, Drake. It's dirty you Mac, but you I'm just saying the way he does it is just an art to it, though. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But when we brought that record up, All right, well, I how, thought wait, he was going to change that line. Hold up, I didn't think that line. No, no, no. Why are you for, changing hold, that line? Hold up for a second, Roy, because I'm sick of this. It's an art when Drake do certain shit that we can't do. How do I say? Yeah, but if you fuck with that nigga, you a clown ass bitch, but and, not, it, and it'd be cool. That's not what he said though. <laughs> that he didn't is say exactly that. No, what he, he said. Didn't, no, he didn't. He just said you're going. <laughs> He just said you're going. He didn't say you're you're a clown because you're going. That is the same no, thing. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. You don't think no. he calling that bitch a clown? No, that's not. No, right, absolutely so not. Right, I don't think he was calling right, her a clown. Right. He was just, just saying just, like, yo, she just, just keep saw it. A Fruitville station. No, he was just saying keep it. Let's let's <laughs> keep it real. Station. Don't worry about it. He was Great just saying movie. let's keep it real. Like let's keep it real. You're going. You're answering the phone and you're going. Just be honest. Like, fam, mall. If he if he shut the fuck up, she'll tell him that. Hey, Michael B. Jordan calls. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'll come back here. I'll come back to the embassy, but I'm out. Mm. That's hating. You no, can't no, hate. no, that was that. That was you Dirty Mac 101. That was some of the greatest you Dirty can't Mac steal ever. Out her pocketbook when she goes to the bathroom. You just can't do these things. No, not no more. I am don't you. Not no more. Not no more. I used to do that. That was my bag. Um, you shouldn't have done that more. 
Every podcast moving <laughs> forward from this point forward. I might apologize to Julius Randle. No, wait, actually, no, no. actually, speaking of that, more, you think the Nets will ever catch the Knicks in the standings? Stop. I'm asking you. <laughs> I'm asking. I'm asking a question. Corey's another bark layer. Hey, do you guys think the Nets will ever catch the Knicks? Yes, I do. Four and three. I do. Toughest schedule in the league to start the season, huh? Yeah. All star. All star Julius Randle, huh? Zion, who? Yo. Yo, listen. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just want to know what you on right now, man. Man, I'm just eating dinner, dog. I'm chilling, bro. Oh, so you just trying to lead the league? Okay, I got you. What's going on, man? <laughs> Yo, Joe just What's asked up, a question. Dog? Joe just asked a question. We want to know. Well, he wants to know: Do will the Nets catch the Knicks? Yeah, but let me let the nigga look me in my eyes, man. Will the Nets have <laughs> hey, 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 Jules? <laughs> will the Nets ever catch us? Y'all yeah, man. I don't know. Oh, it's us now. It's us now. <laughs> yeah, it's, now, us now. Now. Hey. it's us now. Yo, hey, Jules. <laughs> I told you. I told you we got to have that combo, Joe. <laughs> no, we still got to have it in person. Hey, what has Tibbs unlocked in you? <laughs> Is it the Tibster? What the fuck? I think so. Nah, right. Tibbs, Tibbs a beast, bro. He dope. He's super dope. All right, check this out. I ain't going to get you in trouble. I'm just going to keep going with narratives, and you chime in whenever you feel like it. Check this out. The Nets beat the – I mean, the Hawks beat the brakes off the Nets. <laughs> Did you catch that game? What's my man's name? Collins? Come on, oh, I'm yeah, asking you. From the, from the, from the What's the my Hawks? guy? Come on. Is it John Collins? John Collins? Yeah, John Collins. Collins. Julius yeah. Randle. Did you catch that uh, game where he was just made a poster of all game by the Nets? Like, they just took turns dunking on him differently. That didn't happen with the Knicks! <laughs> it didn't happen! It's all I'm saying, man. They Yo, well. uh, are you niggas going to try to sneak in the playoffs? Like, what's up? Talk to me. I mean, we just, we got good energy, dog. We go, we go in every game believing we can win, bro. That's really all it is. But how did that happen? Tibbs? Tibbs, yeah, Tibbs, <laughs> Tibbs a beast, bro. He done did a great job. But everybody just everybody just unselfish, bro. We got a real team. We got a real team. But what do you say to the what do you say, Jules, to the people that uh like Tibbs is rumored to run niggas in the ground and maybe later in the season your legs be tired. Like so people are saying Tibbs is doing that to you and RJ, but do y'all feel like that? I'm happy he's identifying y'all as the niggas to run the offense through, is what I'm saying. Uh no. Nah. I mean you just you just know what to expect, bro. So you gotta take care of your body. Like, mm-hmm. like honestly, like I got a whole, I got a whole, whole setup where I'm taking care of my body, making sure I'm feeling good from night to night. But no, I mean, when you competing, bro, you want to play all the men's. Fuck that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now listen, to win. don't hit me when you see me. I'm gonna throw this out there. No, nah, we good, bro. We good. <laughs> some people say me. I'm some people. <laughs> some, <laughs> some people say that part of you going crazy. Cause we we tired of watching Brandon Ingram go crazy in New Orleans. Like this is still some Laker beef. <laughs> Come on, more bag me up. Is it? No, so I'm where, asking you. No, where you get these narratives from? <laughs> yeah. Because no. because Brandon Ingram and Jules was the point forward niggas to handle the ball on the Lakers. That's why I'm That's- saying that. So then we got Jules, Brandon Ingram went to New Orleans, he's doing what he got to do over there, and we've just been so bad as an organization that it's probably been unfair to you, Jules, with a nigga as your skill set. So here we are this year. You doing everything you got to do, you getting all the talk that Brandon Ingram and these niggas got, like, last year, but, like, that wasn't inspiring to you at all? They wasn't talking about you like this last year, nigga. I mean, average twenty and ten last year. I know, but, but we was trash last year. We the bi, the bi, the bi shit it had nothing to do with it. Hmm. That wasn't the motivation for me. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> I'm happy for him. That wasn't motivation. It was, it was other stuff. Yeah, he ain't like all that Zion talk. <laughs> yeah, nigga, I know. I know, nigga, I know. Yeah, you ain't like all that Zion talk. I know, I know. What lit that fire? Yeah, exactly. So listen, I was telling Maul before you got on the phone, 
Yo, cut that shit out, man. You trying to fucking, you trying to fucking take OP minutes from him. You trying to, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you trying to embarrass my guy, man. Hey, shit, rock. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, me and O play together, dog. What you talking about, man? Stop. See, this, this, you just like a New York dog. Here you go. <laughs> the, the, the narratives. Huh? Create them. <laughs> hey, nah, but real shit, when, he, when is he coming back? Because I want to see both of y'all. Uh, shit, I think he's soon. I think he's coming back soon. He getting there. Yo, is Steve Nash going to call a play ever or no? <laughs> <laughs> Jules, don't answer that. Don't answer that. I'm not doing it. Don't answer that. Don't answer that. Hey, I, I, want more, I want I, more to answer. <laughs> yeah, Jules. When he hang up, I you think so. Ain't, I yeah, think he get is. the fuck out of here, it's, it's early. It's early. Hey, hey Durant, go run that. <laughs> yeah, it's early. It's early. It's early. It's early. It's early in the early. season. All right, yo, my last question. I just want to know when Obi coming back. Because y'all niggas going to try to make the playoffs. So that takes us out of Cade Cunningham contention for the draft. I thought we was tanking. Here you go, want to be good. Fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're yo, the squad, dog. <laughs> yo, I want us to put together a squad. Jules, and if I'm being transparent with you, I don't want you to go bust your ass and we get wins and make the playoffs and then Dolan and the Knicks do some Nick shit and then we don't bring you back. Like, I'm watching the organization. Like, you niggas is balling. The organization better do what they have to do in the offseason. They good, bro. They been good. We got some good people in place, bro. It's changing, dog. They've been there for a month. They just got there. Yeah, but, bro, it's, it's changing, bro. Trust me. It's changing. It's changing. Yo, you got it. You got it. Let me know when you got it. You come up here, no man. I ain't going to give you no false hope, bro. It's, it's a different culture, bro. You got to come up to the studio, man. No, and we got to come to the game. Let's record from the game. When y'all yeah. for next? Uh, Friday. Shit, we might play Friday. I nigga, checked, though. Nigga don't even if know we, when they play. I feel you don't even know when you play no more. You just show up. Yeah, yeah hey, man. This nigga. You know, I mean, just do what I do, bro. He getting all types, <laughs> of, he getting all types of new pussy now. No, Jules is happily married. Oh, To well. wifey, I said hello. Oh, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm gonna done. call you when we get out of here, bro. I right. we love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait! No, 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 no bro. No, no, no. Last thing, oh. Jules. Last, yo, because I said I'm willing to apologize to Julius Randle every podcast for the rest of the season, mm -hmm. but Maul owes R.J. Barrett an apology. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, Tell oh, the truth. Man. I don't know what Maul said, Joe. I just know what you said. Mm. See? Stop trying to pull me in beef. <laughs> Why are you trying right, to pull me in beef, right, nigga? Right, look, don't handle your beef, right, nigga. Don't even worry about it. My bad. Handle your beef, you nigga. Right. You right, dude. No, <laughs> my God. We good, bro. We good. We Yo, good. Yo, good luck, man. Happy to see y'all good. We fuck with y'all, man. Thank you. And come up here whenever y'all free, please. My God, for sure. For sure. I'll holler at y'all. All right, bro. All right, Maul, bro. you owe fucking R.J. Barrett Not in a party. You do. He looks great. He looks great. He looks great. This thing is crazy. But man. it's early. We'll be seven games in. Come on, man. Next five games, I might be here cursing him out again. So Steve Nash is not gonna coach. He's and, gonna and Everybody's coach, okay with that. He's coaching, man. Stop. Hey, well, he's coaching man. where? He stopped doing that. All right. man. He's coaching. That's what it's, listen, it's early. It's if y'all not gonna be honest and forget it's about early. it. It's early. It's early. Right, listen, early. I'll move on to some questions that we may not be so invested in. Okay. Uh why does Steph Curry do that to Damien? <laughs> to Damien? <laughs> That's who we need to call. No, come on, we man. We need to call Dave. <laughs> no, more. listen, honestly, remember a few weeks ago I came in here, I told you that before the season was starting, them niggas was chatty chatty to each other. They was mm -hmm. like, yo, I'm going to shoot the deep throw, yeah. deep ball, 40 feet. All right, me too. First yeah. game, whatever. Yeah. So that's what we got. Dame mm -hmm. had 40, 38, whatever he had. Yeah, but, but 62 was just different. Why does Steph seemingly always do that to Dame? Well, uh, I don't know if it's always to him, but I think I think that Steph didn't like what a lot of the people were saying about Dame That's shooting it. in the bubble. Like he took, I think he took that personal. They started calling him the best shooter in the league. They started saying that uh, Steph can't shoot from that far. It was a lot of things that people were saying. And this, again, everybody has convenient amnesia. You know, Steph was hurt. Mm -hmm. We hadn't seen him in a, a few months. Uh, you know, the Warriors were not the Warriors that they were due to injuries and stuff like that. So it was, you know, Dame was the guy for the moment. He was the MVP of the bubble. Um, and, I, you know, you get it. He's the, he's the guy for the moment. But I think Steph was just reminding people of, you know, exactly how great he is. He is the greatest. I, I'm, I'm tired of people just saying he's the greatest shooter ever. I think he's one of the greatest players ever at this point. Steph? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. He's definitely one of the greatest players that the NBA has seen. Um, 
and he's back. I'm just happy that he's healthy. He looked like he's having fun again. Uh, you can see him motivating the new guys on the team. Uh, Andrew Wiggins seems to be playing a lot better with Steph out there with him. Um, so, yeah, they look good, man. The Warriors still look good. They still look like they're going to be a dangerous team in the West. Think he's better than Larry Bird? Absolutely. Don't do this, Roy. All right, I'm going to try to get some answers, y'all. <clears throat> see if we can unpack this. 2021, I'm trying to get all the answers for the people, man. Good luck. Uh, no, nah, honestly, we got to find out. You looking for the answers? Yeah, we got to see why Steph is doing that to, to Dame, man. This shit is crazy. Oh, now you don't want to answer. Nah, Dame in the gym. He better be. <laughs> yeah, he in the gym. And I think they play tonight. Nigga ain't going to put 70 on me, and I'm just I'm answering sorry, the phone. The you called has a voicemail box. All right, Dame didn't answer. Maybe he'll call back. We'll see. Are they playing tonight? I don't yeah, know. I think Paul and Blazers. I don't know the Blazers oh, schedule. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. But that was a good game. What uh, uh, Parks? You sad about the Dolphins not making it? What's up? No, nah, not really. We over uh, exceeded expectations, and we have the third pick in the draft and the third pick in the second round. Who do you take? Yes. Well, now who do you take? But are you in the quarterback suite? No, picks? no. You feel good? I'm gonna. Him. I don't. It. I don't know if I'm love to it yet, but I'm. At least trying to build them around him. We had no wide receivers. Our offensive line was complete trash for the most part. A lot of rookies, so there might be some room to grow there. But I would draft a tackle with the first, the third pick, first round, and then get weapons, wide receivers, running backs. Um, I'm sure you all are familiar with the uh, Philly Gate, the Eagles debacle versus uh-huh. the Redskins. <laughs> the Giants you know, fans seem to be cost you a in playoff that. berth. I'm not that fan, by the way. We no, want them just to make my position clear, yeah. I thought they never should have went on the four-game win streak. They should have never been in contention for the playoffs. And you can't have an attitude about shit when you won six games. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. Mm-hmm. The end. Now, okay. I respect that. putting Stuphield, Stuffield, Stuffeld, whatever his name is, uh-huh. in for Jalen Hurts yeah. with 11 minutes left, down three in the fourth, you look nuts, my nigga. But That's I don't true. put that on the Giants. I put that on the Eagles wanting a better draft pick. The yeah. same thing that I was saying that the Giants should do. The Eagles went from uh, pick 10 to pick 7 mm-hmm. by not yeah. winning the game. But I think they also announced that they were going to play the kid. I get that the, the game was closer than maybe it should have been, and they should have tried to win it. But if they said they're going to play the kid, it's not really that scandalous to me. Mm-hmm. Well, my thing, if, you, if you're going to play the kid, because you reserved it, right? He's on your team if you want to see what he got. Yeah. Then play him. Right. Not in the fourth. True. Play the man. True. <laughs> True. Give him a game. Give him, give him a half at least. Jalen Hurts looks decent, though. Jalen Hurts is all right, man. Yeah. Listen, I saw somebody tweet, uh, the Giants are supposed to have Chase Young and Jalen Hurts, and I've been sick to my stomach ever since. As you should be. That's a fact. They've had bad drafts. That's a fact. They've they, had but bad they drafts. could have both Jalen Hurts and Chase Young. Yes. Bad drafts. Whatever, um, man. Justin Fields looks great, too. Did you watch any of the Ohio State game? Yeah, he State went game? crazy. Yeah, he went crazy. He went crazy. I'm, I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for him and, and uh, Trevor Lawrence. Who y'all like yeah. in the Super Bowl? <laughs> y'all know how I feel. It's patty time. Patty, Patty Baker's man. Listen, the Bills might sneak in there. I have to see Josh Allen beat Patty for me to believe it, but that's that's a credible threat. If they can stay hot like they're hot right now, But they're know. not in Buffalo. That's true. If they were in Buffalo, I'm, I'm with you. I just don't think Buffalo's ready to beat Patty in Kansas City. We'll see. We'll see. In Buffalo, though. And Buffalo lost, what, three games? It's a, yeah, three. Yeah, It's going to be tough. Buffalo is going to be a tough a tough out. I watched them twice this, this year. They look good. Yeah. They're they real good. good. Yeah, they, they look good. Anybody know. that had Josh Allen on their fantasy team was happy. a happy camper. Yeah. I don't know if I like the, the, sorry, the, uh, the Saints or the uh, Packers out of the NFC. Okay. But one of them, too. One of them, too. Okay. I can see it. I like A-Rod. Yo, I yeah, I also think real important. It's important for me to know. We were talking about Dan Levitard earlier. Let me just say that from his own Twitter account, he's doing great. Um, he says that everyone is reaching out to him in regards That's, to his show. He, he'll be fine. And he said he's going to take the next two to three months to remain independent while he mm, sought things he out. Should. And there's no shortage of suitors. Him, yeah, him, and sure. his, him and his dad are I TV totally gold. understood that because it sounded eerily familiar. I won't get into any of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tune into whatever he's doing independently. I like their show for years. Him so. and his dad are great. Yeah. Yeah. That's some of the most entertaining sports shit ever. Yeah. Like you get to do a sports show with your dad who you probably were introduced to sports from. Yeah. Like that's just, to me, that was like super dope. 
I'm sure they probably won't be able to get the Mina Kimes's and Bobani's on there though, which mm-hmm. I liked when the third person was yeah, also yeah, yeah. entertaining or, yeah. and knowledgeable, mm-hmm. like those two or any of the other guests. Maybe Saturday we can get into some of the fun I had with the Von Miller text. Did you guys see Von Miller Gate? I did not. I, I, <laughs> I saw it and I laughed. Wasn't well, it awesome, Roy? Wait, what Von did? <laughs> I, uh, it just I sounds funny, Roy. <laughs> Listen, niggas gonna nigga. Say it, Roy. Say it, I Rory. I, I said I identified with him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, no, that's wait, <laughs> that's wait. the white boy of saying niggas gonna nigga. Wait. Yeah, man, I love. Listen, I I love them too. I love, I love, I love him, I love him <laughs> and his girl, man, Megan. I love them both. So I reserve judgment. But this got wild for a little bit. That's a little wild. This got wild. And this got well, ugly. It goes, it goes on. It goes further. Yeah, we can unpack this on Saturday, man. Oh man. But see, I just can't with the V on top. Like that could be any. Don't do that. We're not gonna just do that. No, that's him. How we know that? <laughs> that's Vaughn. Nah, man, I can't. That's some sick shit. If that was Vaughn, if Vaughn was getting that over the text message. <laughs> oh my god. Um, and with that said, we can get into that later. Is there anything else that we are missing for this particular episode? This was a really good episode. I like it. It was. Yeah. I'm not playing with these niggas. Twenty twenty one. Let's see. Snoop M. Uh, Benzino Royce. We can get into Benzino Royce later too. Uh, does Hollywood return? We can get into that later. I, I got a, I got appointments scheduled for tests tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm getting back, man. Rory, we miss you, man, and uh, uh, we I do hope that you're able to join us on on Friday. I hope everything is focused. I, I steady. really do too. Um, I have a rapid test tomorrow. While y'all are hearing this, but rapid test is rapid test. I got the Namine on Thursday, so hopefully I'm I'm back uh, to see you all on Friday. I hope so too. Got name action? Hello, this is Joe Budden from the Joe Budden Podcast. It was good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's some bullshit. Know it's some bullshit. <laughs> hey, 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 Dame, Dame, I cut my sleeper pick off to speak to you, man. First of all, Happy New Year, my brother. How yes, you doing? Happy New Year, man. Happy New Year. Yeah, same to you, man. I'm chilling. I just got to the arena. It was good. Oh, you got a game? Yeah, we played the uh, Bulls tonight at home. Oh, that's light work. You know, blow them niggas out. Fuck Zach Levine. <laughs> <laughs> What's Dave, up, bro? Listen, I, I ain't gonna hold you, man. I'm gonna keep this quick because you gotta get. Yo, why does Steph do that to you? <laughs> what do you mean why he did it to me? <laughs> look, look, let him know, damn. You wasn't on that nigga. Let him know. No, no he did that to you, nigga. Hey, I mean, this how this how it is, bro. I didn't. I do this shit to people all the time. So that's a fact. You can't you can't dish the shit out like I mean I had sixty three times last year. And that's 50, a fact. Like five times. So Damien, shit, when it happened, Damien when you, when it happened to you, Listen. when it happened to you, it happens, man. No 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 like, no 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 no. I'm not letting you do that. You're good at this media shit. So let me let me try to word this a different way. I'm telling way. you the truth, nigga. I, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Listen, you wouldn't lie to me. Listen, last time I asked you about Steph and them niggas, know what you said? You said like, them niggas is good, and they are I good. Know. But what I'm saying to you is this. On Instagram, I caught a little exchange between you and Mr. Curry. Yeah. And you were saying, yo, I'm going to pull this shit from 40 opening night. And then he hit you back looking for the damn flow. Your phone cutting out. You said I was saying what? You were saying, yo, I'm going to pull this shit from 40 feet opening night. And then he responded and said, yeah, me, if you do it, I'm doing it. And y'all had like a little friendly exchange. Are you aware of that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when you have that exchange, Dame, you can't let a nigga drop 70 on you. <laughs> Bro. Hello, are you there? I'm here. Are you right there? That's what I'm saying. What I'm telling you is the truth, nigga. I'm not telling you no media answer, nigga. I'm telling you the truth. This is what you got to understand. They are, the way they plan, them niggas is screening and got him running all over the place and like they're their whole objective is to find opportunities for him and that nigga can shoot like a motherfucker so if somebody like that in the league gets going especially if it's Steph who can you know the best shooter in the history of the game if he get going like that nigga it's gonna be hard to stop him and he the thing wasn't even him getting going he was living at he shot 20 free throws so uh, stop fouling him, then, nigga. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Why are you fouling nigga, him? Hey, what? You ain't why you clearly ain't watched the game. <laughs> now, damn, I'm fucking with you, bro. Whether <laughs> I seen the game or not, I'm just calling you to fuck with you, man. 
I know who uh, Steph no. is and what he does. I know who you are and what you do, man. But it was yeah, great. I, I ain't tripping. I, hey, I'm not tripping at all, bro. Dave, <laughs> hey, just so you know, my fun is happening on the east. On the east, with the Nets not being able to catch the Knicks. You see what we doing out here, man? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. That shit ain't gonna last. That shit ain't gonna uh, last. <laughs> Damn, Dave, nah, that ain't, that ain't happening. That ain't gonna last all season. You got about another week, nigga. Uh. <laughs> Damn. Hey, not a week. Hey, don't let Julius Randle drop 70 on you, nigga. You better watch your mouth. <laughs> you all right. <laughs> all right, Dave, we love you, man. Go have fun at your game. We'll holler at you, bro. Hey, nigga, you better, you better promote since your ass bullshit and been bullshitting on my feature for uh six years. <laughs> hey no, this year this year, twenty twenty one. When I drop my new shit, you better uh Play my shit on your podcast. No, listen, say less, man. I'm Steph Currying you on the track when we do it. <laughs> it's, it's half drop at 70. <laughs> it's all good, man. Yep. All right, well, have, have fun with Zach Levine, nigga. <laughs> all right, bro. Love. Doom, we love you. We miss you. Thank we, you. We appreciate you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. For man. all of your contributions. Uh, this seems weird even talking to you this way. But I understand the cycle of life. And I'm just appreciative of even outside of the music. I'm not just talking about the music. Him. Mm, him. Mm -hmm. His, his point, impact. Point yeah. That's what I'm saying. And that's the part we skip a lot. Or we get to it when niggas is murdered and, and shot. We get to the human level of things. But in this instance, I don't want that I don't want that to fall on, on deaf ears. Just his being changed things. Mm -hmm. and, and and what a perfect example that being popular doesn't mean you're going to impact the world and not being popular doesn't mean you're not going to impact the world because doom was not popular but he impacted this culture more than any of us could explain mm -hmm. and doom was popular too at the same time like mad villainy yeah. uh peanut butter wolf was saying it was gold now that mm -hmm. i just played and i know uh the Danger Doom shit he did with uh, Comedy Central or whatever the mm -hmm. show was, mm -hmm. that was gold. Like, he's old records. Yeah, no, and, for sure. And, like, and, he wasn't completely out the oh, trunk no, of the no. car and dependent. I, I, didn't, I didn't finish to the point that I, we should have brought up earlier. Showed how you can be profitable in hip-hop without the mainstream monster. Doom, we love you. We celebrating life in 2021. Y'all want to thank y'all for listening out there. Shout out to the first and last time listeners. Shout out to everybody at work, everybody that's trucking through it, grinding out there. Everybody linking and building, man. Shout out to y'all. Everybody make this culture go round and round and round. Shout out to the rappers, old and new. Shout out to the people that's uh, bridging the gap. Again, shout out to the podcasters. I love y'all. I fuck with y'all in a different way. Again, shout out to the fans, shout out to the listeners, shout out to everybody out there that's excited to have made it out of 2020 and get into 2021, honestly. Yo, and I hope everybody's on their good foot for the new year like I am, man. Like, yeah. earlier I was talking about just taking out my 2020 on 2021. Uh, that's right in line with time being my inventory, just really busting your ass and, and enjoying quality of life. I would advise everybody else out there to do the same, and I would hope that everyone out there is doing the exact same thing. Yeah, but be safe, too. Be safe. I know it's a new year. It feels like a new beginning, but there's still a lot of shit going on out there. Be safe. Yeah, be safe is the most important thing. Rory, I can't wait to have you back here, man. Listen, Word. I was just saying behind the scenes, like one of the things with podcasting, it's like spades. It is a rhythm thing. And yeah. ever since we got out of our Spotify shit, that was a little rhythm affecting me getting COVID, you getting COVID. Just we've had to deal with some things internally. I won't really press it now because it's a new year, but I'm praying for the consistency back in potting for the year it's coming i believe it 
Listen, as soon as you get a negative test, we on these niggas' ass. Let my beat ride out, though. Wait a minute! Nah, switch it up on him. Yes, sir. Celebrating life this year. We had a lot of death last year. We here though. Hey. YouTube, we rocking out right now. We don't expect you to understand. Also, let me shout out the YouTube commenters. You guys are geniuses. <laughs> you guys are really special people, and I'm really enjoying reading what y'all have to say. Hey, uh, Molly Mall, uh, all I do stand tall, uh, and to all of y'all, uh, got money so you know I ball. Hey, come on, Mom, give me some bars. Hey, no, you in no. Shaka feature? No, no, nah. not over the legend. Savon, it's Shaka Khan. Let your podcast friends know. <laughs> it's not Maya. Speaking of R&B divas, Ashanti, Ashanti said something recently. We found her. She said, hey, you guys. She got a negative cold. test. Yeah, right? I know, I know. I know. Shaka Khan is on. Shit, ain't that shit on Saturday? Yeah. Saturday night. Saturday no, night. Oh, look it's at lit. that. Yeah. Keisha going to do Keisha-ish things. Keep us in your prayers. Lord knows we need to be there. Hold up, man. Bring, bring me back a little bit. Yo, keep us in your prayers. Lord knows we need to be there. Until the next time, I bid you adieu. Farewell. Hasta la vista. Adios. Uh, arrivederci. So long. Goodbye, man. Remember, life is a series of moments and moments pass. So let's make this one last as if it's all we have. Rest in peace to everybody that we have lost. Mm. High vibrations and high frequency to the rest of y'all, man. We'll be back Saturday, same time, same place. Y'all know what's going on. Until then, stay safe out there. Continue to love hip-hop, love culture. And we'll holler at y'all, man. We good? We good? We good? We good.